for yourself next time, why don't you? You know she was up to something. It's bad enough just having to deal with Tina. Do you have to antagonize her? Well, I can't help it if she makes my blood boil. Every time I see her, I just want to... Faith, please, if we're going to fight, let's please not let it be over, Tina. All right, the subject's closed. Oh, my God, Lita. She's gone. Let her go, damn it! She hasn't done anything! I could have you shot for trying to escape. Why don't you? David. I'm sick of your damn threats. And I'm sick of you, and next time I'll get you. Why didn't you run? You could have gotten away. Because I can't leave without you. <laughs> what a ridiculous pair of lovebirds you are. You can't bear to part. And even if that means being killed, obviously, you two cannot be trusted to be together again. Therefore, Jenny, the time has come for you to pack a bag. One life to live will continue in a moment. Where are you going to take her? None of your business. Damn it, she's my wife. If you could stop being obstinate, you could still live and see her again. No, please, please don't hurt him. <laughs> if he'll cooperate, no harm will come to him. I won't leave. And I'm sick and tired of coddling the two of you here. Come with me out there. <laughs> You stop it! Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! If you try to escape again, I promise you this time the guard will shoot, and that's an order. Here you go, sunshine. Why don't you play with this doll? And Delilah and I are going to talk for a minute. Okay. I love being with her so much. I hope that Rafe doesn't change his mind about me being with her. Are you really that worried about Clover getting in the way? He's been spending a lot of time with her. Well, are you jealous or what? Well, let's just say that I, I care for Rafe. I always have. And it just makes me mad to see him with Clover. Why? Rafe is a good man. He's open and honest and loving, and he just deserves to be with a good woman. And Clover is not like that. She's, she lies and she uses people. Honey, Rafe is hardly a fool. From what I've seen of Clover, she's pretty transparent. He's going to see through that before long. Well, I don't know. Rafe might be a good cop, but he's not very suspicious by nature. And he's so vulnerable right now. She could take advantage of him so easily. Is he that lonely for a woman? See, it's more than that. It's... It's just... Well, see, he's so concerned about Sammy growing up without a mother. Now, has he said something to you about it? Yeah. He asked me to marry him when I was pregnant with Sammy, and then after well, she was born. Well, I mean, was he in love with you, or was he just concerned for Sammy? I don't know. There was something between us. Except I think at the time he was more concerned for Sammy. And I couldn't stand the thought of someone marrying me just out of a sense of duty. And I was also still in love with Bo. Mm. Are you sure that your feelings for Rafe aren't a lot stronger than you're letting on? Well, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how I feel about him, except I just don't want to see him end up with Clover. I know she doesn't care about Sammy. Well, then, why do you think she's going after Rafe? She just lost the Backstreet Bar, and she's just looking for any kind of security. Oh, come on, it's got to be more than that. No, Clover is not very deep, believe me. She's... she's scared now. She, she lost the Backstreet, that was everything to her. She's clutching at the first man that she can find, and I don't want that to be Rafe. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to admit, she's not really his type. No, she's... She's putting on a big act right now, too. Clover is a taker. She's not a giver. And I just don't want to see Rafe be taken. If you feel that strongly about it, I think you should do something. What? I don't know. But I have to agree with you. I think that Rafe is a wonderful fellow. I would hate for him to get hurt. Yeah, I've been thinking a lot about Sammy. 
ever since the other night when I saw you playing with her. It was reminding me so much of my own daddy. God, he was so special to me. Yeah, I remember you telling me that. Yeah, he used to teach me so much cool stuff, you know? Stuff like whittling and playing the harmonica and making spinners out of old tin cans, you know, stuff like that. What does all this have to do with Sammy? You know, what I was just thinking was that it would be so neat if I could teach Sammy some of the stuff I knew when I was a kid. Real country stuff, you know, good old down-home values. Do you think I'm missing the boat on something? Oh, no, Rafe, you are wonderful, but she doesn't have a mama. And there's something to be said for the female point of view, don't you think? I'm what, making spinners? Well, you know, on anything, just being with her, female to female, that's got to count for something. Because, you know, me, I didn't grow up with a mama. And I just know how much I would have loved it, so I would love to help. Well, Clover, that means a lot to me. Is there something special you'd like to do? Well, it is May, and I did hear about this one particular fishing hole just on the outskirts of town that I'll bet you is full and jumping. And if we <laughs> went down there, we would make it a day, I'll tell you that much. Well, Sammy's hands are still kind of tiny for a fishing pole, but... I think uh, a day in the country sounds pretty close to yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah, all right. You know what? I can make up some cornbread and a mess of fried chicken. What about all the fish we're going to catch? Well, we'll eat that, too. We'll have us a genuine country picnic. <laughs> sounds great. Why, now, did you see a young girl sitting over there? Uh, uh, no, I was doing the books. When that happens, I lose track of everything else. Well, are you sure you didn't see her? Of course I'm sure. What? My key. What? But my key, it was gone. I mean, it was just right here. She must have taken it. Who? But the girl that was over there. Tina, you are driving me bonkers. Look, never, never mind. Can I leave for a little while? I mean, I'd like, I'd like to stay longer, but, uh, yeah, I have to go help a friend in trouble. You have to go help? <sighs> are you feeling all right? Yes, never felt better. Well, all right. There's nothing like a little hard work to make the person's good stuff come out. <laughs> yeah, 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 I agree. Yeah. Right, Listen, I'll, uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay, I'll see you then. We did the right thing, Lolly. They know how tired you are, and you need your sleep. Look at this place, Lolly. Vicky's sister is supposed to be rich, but it sure doesn't look like it. Oh, well. I guess it really doesn't matter anyway. This couch is nice and comfortable. Lolly? I hope you realize this means we're never going to get to Wisconsin. We'll never see our friends again. Never. Ever. I guess there's really not much point in going on then, is there? I should have just called him. Would have saved us all a lot of trouble. How did O'Neill find out about the investigation? Maggie. She talked to the doctor who examined Gloria the night she had died. Seems the doc is a friend of Pete's. Damn it, I told her to keep her nose out of this. Well, I'm going to talk to her about it. Right now, I'm trying to figure out how to handle O'Neill. Pretty convincing story, he told me. At least he seemed upset. You think maybe it might have just been a performance? If it was, he deserves an Oscar. Well, or he could have been embroidering the story to make himself look good so that yeah. you'd call off the investigation. So this is it, Pete O'Neill, liar or saint. Well, One I... thing is for damn sure, he's convinced my whole motive for this is nothing more than a hatchet job. Well, you can't blame him for thinking that, Herb. I dropped this investigation in a snap fire convinced he was handing me straight dope. <clears throat> but you, uh 
can't do that unless we have more information. Okay, stay on the case, at least for the time being. But whatever you do, keep a low profile. We cannot repeat our chance of repeating what happened today. Well, <laughs> I wasn't the one who loused that up, Herb. Yes, I know. I'm sorry. I thought you were alone. Come back here, Maggie. You and I are going to have this out right now. So, what's a good day for you and Sammy? Uh, I'm not sure yet. I'll have to check the roster. Well, when can you find out? Oh, about 15 minutes. I'm due back to the station house. Oh, you got to go back already? That's what keeps the paycheck coming. Uh, Come on. I'll drop you off at Elmo's. Oh, well, I'm not due there till 5 o'clock. I'll finish my coffee. I can walk over. You sure? Oh, yes, no problem. You just make sure you tell me when you get that day off. Yeah, you can bet on that. Okay. Thank you soon. Okay, right. Bye-bye. See you later. Hey, Pete, how you doing? Great. How's the campaign coming? It's breathing. I hear it's breathing fire. The word is you're the odds-on favorite. Oh, Neil Ho, he is so far ahead there on the odds. <laughs> how you doing? I'm doing our ramble, sir. You're a little tired. All right, why don't you sit yourself down there in one of the little counties, little booths over here, and I'll get you some clam chowder, best you've had this side of Nantucket, okay? Best offer I've ever had today. Take it easy, so Pete. Good luck. Thank you, right. though, Neil. Don't say hello. Hello, Clover. <laughs> What are you doing moping around? Why don't you come over here and sit with me? You know, you heard what Wanda said. Everybody knows you're going to win. Well, I'm, uh, I'm ahead for the moment. What's that supposed to mean? Here's something. You ever uh, play poker? Yeah, in Avery, Tennessee, it's either that or watch the trees grow. What happens when you lay your cards down on the table? Well, then you wait for the next guy to lay down his cards, and you just hope that yours are better than his. You just played a big one, huh? It's an understatement. Yeah, I've been playing a lot of poker myself, too. I'll tell you, the, the stakes are high and the odds are pretty good. I sure hope I don't blow it, because I just might lose my entire future. I think the only difference between us is I'm not sure I ever really had a future. Well, there's been a change of plans. Monica will leave for Vienna immediately and see that David's new quarters are comfortable. But she won't be posing as Jenny Rinaldi. She's been too gentle with David and Jenny. So sensitive to that predicament, the maestro has broken hearts on two continents and sure he senses her weaknesses. No, I can't risk it. Oh, Greta would be perfect, and I might add she's very short-tempered and extremely dangerous. Exactly what the job requires, don't you think? Well, I've got a couple of pairs of jeans and a couple of sweaters in case we go somewhere cold. Maybe I should pack some shorts in case we go somewhere... Stop it. Please, stop it. Please. Please don't let them take me away. I can't bear to say goodbye to you. I'll go mad. We are going to see each other again. When? Where will it be in this life? Of course. You heard them. We will be together again. Oh, yeah. We've been able to trust them all this time. We've got no choice at this point but to go along. But I'm not going to know what's going to happen to you when I leave. I mean, I, maybe they're going to torture you or maybe... Maybe they're... Listen to me. Listen to me. They will never kill me. I am much too valuable to them. What happens if you don't go along with the plan? I'll find some way to get around them. Now, listen. I want you to remember one thing. Wherever you are, I am right there with you. Okay? And I don't want you to listen to anything they say, because they're going to tell you lies. They're going to tell you that they, that they hurt me. That's just because they want you to go along but with them. But you know them. that I will never be one of them. You know that. Now, David, don't ever... Don't even pretend to go along with them. Please, promise me that, okay? You did that once before to try to protect me, and I don't want you to do it again. Please, promise me, okay? And listen to me. I believe this with all my heart. I would rather die, David. I would rather die than let them use you as a tool against our country, okay? Neither of us are going to be hurt as long as they still believe that we're useful to them. Now listen to me, I am going to play along, play the game, make them think I'm cooperating with them, do anything I can to gain time, but no matter what, one way or another, I'm gonna find out where they take you, and so help me God, I'm gonna come for you. I wanna believe you. Look at me. We are going to be together again. This is not the last time that I will touch you and look at you, we will make love again a thousand times. We are going to have a life together. I swear it to you. I, I want to believe. You got to, or we got nothing. Please, don't give up. Don't give up. 
Oh, God. I love you so much. no say in the matter. Time to go. If we're going to have a talk, can't it wait until we're alone? John's as involved as I am. You know exactly what this is about, damn it, and don't pretend you don't. I may have to take orders from you, but I refuse to be reprimanded like some little kid. And why did you act like one? I told you to stay out of this investigation. Everything I did was to help you with the election. There was no other purpose in my mind. You know who that doctor was you talked to? A buddy of Pete O'Neill's. And you believe me, you wasted no time getting back to O'Neill about the smear job we're trying to pull in this office. You said that you wanted to make sure that Pete O'Neill was fit for public office. Oh. Now, if he's involved in a murder, it's, isn't it my obligation to find out? And, and no matter where it could lead to... Not without my say-so! We had nothing but innuendo on O'Neill until you tipped him off and we may never have a chance at anything else. Herb, just listen to no, me. No, let John listen. Could... I've had it. And I warn you, Maggie, you are flirting dangerously close with being bounced out of this office and your public career. Don't cross me again. Uh, what's your rush? Oh, I do not need another dose, thank you. Oh, come on, Herb was easy on you. You deserved a lot more. <laughs> not from you. Since when are you a private investigator? From the moment I found out that you weren't up to it. Hey, I didn't blow this case. You had nothing to blow. You had a little conversation with Gloria's brother. At least I went and dug for some hard evidence. What did you expect to find out from Dr. Janice? More than we had. If he had thought that a crime had been committed, he would have reported it the night Gloria Alexander died. She was hit by a car. It didn't say anything about a hit and run. You already know about that? Yes. Or I mean, maybe you didn't know, think that I you thought I was more inept than that. No, I don't know. I just thought that he would think of something that, that at the time he didn't think was important. Maybe something that Gloria mentioned, something about Pete O'Neill. But he didn't, okay? So that's where it is. Now you butt out. I want to win this election. That's fine. Then stick the handshakes. Leave the investigating to me. Is that clear? Thanks for your advice, Vicki. I... I don't know what I'm going to do yet, though, but... Well, you have to give it a lot of thought, I think. Yeah, I need to figure out how I do feel about Rafe. One thing I do know for certain is that I'm not going to let anyone take care of Sammy that doesn't love her. Are you really sure that Clover's that callous? I mean, how could anybody resist that little angel? Yeah, Clover is only interested in herself. She's only using Sammy as a tool, and I'm not going to let her treat her that way. Well, I called the architectural firm, and it's just like Heron said. They still had the original architectural drawings. Oh, Heron, that's fantastic. Thank you, Matt. I arranged for one of the architects to work under Heron's direction. Oh, you mean you're going to undo some of Tina's handiwork? <laughs> that disappoints you? Well, I think that you should save the photo or take photographs so that you can put them in a museum of bad taste. <laughs> no, I don't think we need any reminders of the abominations that Tina wrought. Well, rest assured, I shall wipe out every last unpleasant memory of Miss Tina with a vengeance. <laughs> was right on the key. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to take it and run away, but 
I was so afraid that the policeman would make me go back to the sanitarium. But I told you I wouldn't tell him your secret, right? I know. It's just uh, I was so confused. I, I got so scared. I, I can't go back there ever again. Not ever. Why? It seems like a nice place to me. I get so lonely there, and I, I have no friends. My only friend there was Vicky, and, and now she's gone. Yeah, good friend. Okay. Yeah, hard to find. My favorite. Morning after blues. What? No, no, no. Of course not. You're not getting tired of dating the Invisible Man, now, are you? No. Don't ever think that. Of course not. No. I wouldn't blame you. I mean, champagne and dancing is uh, not too romantic when the orchestra comes out of a radio. Last night was wonderful. Then why the long face? I was just thinking about my family. I called them last night to tell them that I wasn't coming home, and I know they, they just took it in stride. <laughs> There's no pleasing the girl. When Dee Dee started asking too many questions, you told her to back off. Well, I still want them to care about me. I'm supposed to be running around with a married man. Well, maybe they realize that you're a grown woman, and you certainly are. Grown up enough to compete with the ghost of Jenny? It's not a competition. Funny, I just feel that way because I can see that you can't stop thinking about her. It's because I feel so useless just sitting here. Talk about the morning after blues. Connie, it has nothing to do with you. I just need to find Jenny and David and make sure they're safe. Mm -hmm. Well, do you think they're going to come through that door? Hardly. Uh, damn it, I left my wallet upstairs in the, in the room. Can I, could you run up and get it for me? I want to check some messages at the front desk. Give me a break, Brad. This has to do with this guy over here, doesn't it? What does he want with you? Rupert, we can't risk being stopped for speeding. Don't listen to him, Rupert. Let's see what this car can do. I'm very glad you still have your sense of humor. Mm, just barely. But you could restore it easily if you pulled over and let me out. <laughs> what would you do out there in the middle of nowhere? I would get back to my husband. Mm, fear not. Dieter is looking him after him very well. I can imagine. <laughs> Why haven't you asked me about what we plan to do with you? Because I'm not interested in hearing any more of your lies. Nor are we. I've had a belly full of capitalist propaganda about life on the other side of the Iron Curtain. We're about to give you a unique opportunity to discover the truth for yourself. Please, come on, back in here. There is nothing to be afraid of. There really isn't. Besides, how can we be friends if you run away? You want to be my friend? Well, yes, very much. Why? Well, because you're a nice person, and I like to help nice people. Why? Well, because it makes me strong. It makes me feel strong and, and wanted. Uh, look, Lita, why don't you have a seat, okay? Okay, uh... I know how you feel, Tina, because that's the way Lolly makes me feel. 
The other patients at Mountain View, they don't understand that. They make fun of me. What, because you talk to Lolly? Yeah, they say Lita's crazy. She talks to a doll. But I know she's a doll. I mean, here, listen. She doesn't have a heartbeat or anything. Yeah, so you just pretend then that she's listening and that she answers you. Is that bad? No, I don't think so. When I was a little girl, I used to talk to my dolls, but then I... I did grow up, and I had to give up dolls and start talking to real people. Oh, I could never give up Lolly. Oh, and I would never ask you to, Lena. Didn't you talk to your family? My family? Well, before you moved to Mountain View. Oh, sure. Well, was that a long time ago? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it, it was a real long time ago. Don't they visit? No, they can't. They live in Wisconsin, and that's why I have to go there, because they can't come and see me. Well, who are they? Your, um, your mom and dad? And my sister, Regina. She's a genius, you know. And she plays the violin, wins contests. Oh, we're all very proud of Regina. Aren't we, Lolly? Yeah, so you get stuck in Mountain View so dear Regina doesn't get embarrassed. What? Nothing, I was just thinking out loud. Look, Tina, I really have to go. Oh, no, no, Lita, please don't. But I have to. Everyone knows by now that I, I've run away from Mountain View, and they've called the police to take me back, and, and they said, go, get that crazy girl and drag her back. That's what they said, I know. Oh, I'm sure nobody said anything like that. <sighs> Look, Tina, that's what they said about Tracy. But that's because Tracy was dangerous. She tried to stab Lolly with a knife. Yeah, and you're not like that, are you? No. Okay, well, then the police aren't going to be looking for you. It's, it's safe for you to be here. I don't know. Vicky saved Lolly. She did? When Tracy tried to stab her, Vicky took care of her and saved her. She was my only friend. My only friend at Mountain View. Well, she's still your friend. She's my friend, too. Well, sure. She's your sister. Well, my half-sister, but... You know what we're going to do now? What? We're going to call Vicky so she can help you. No, Tina, don't call Vicky, please. Please, don't be upset. You don't tell me anything, and you want me out of the room, and you ask me not to be upset? Please, don't do this. Look, the guy just didn't expect me to be with anyone. He doesn't like crowds. Why, why doesn't he like crowds? Because that's the way he operates. <sighs> he looks like one of those characters from the track. Is this, does this have to do with Bart Barron's horses? Honey, please just go up to the room. It's Jenny, isn't it? That's it. It's Jenny. This has to do with Jenny. Fine. You stay. I'll go. Why don't I come with you? I promise. I'll tell you everything that goes down. Just stay put, okay? Do I have a choice, Brad? Mm, where's my grapefruit? I need to see it my way. <sighs> This is a bad place to conduct business. My apologies. Let's uh, step this way. It'll be safe enough. You have my order? Would I be here if I didn't? I didn't expect to see you so soon. You said there'd be a bonus if I came through in 24 hours. Let's see the cash. I don't need to count it. That's what the last guy said, and he was 100 bucks light. Congratulations, you're an honest man. Here you go. Best quality available outside a U.S. passport office. It better be for what you charge. You get what you pay for. This baby's gonna get you out of the country, Mr. Van Dyke. Okay, I stayed away. Now, what's in that envelope? See for yourself. A passport? For Bud Van Dyke? I'm leaving for Vienna today. Connie, I have to find Jenny. Beautiful scenery, isn't it? And once we get across the border, it will become even more beautiful. I'm afraid our little tour is going to have to wait. Nature calls. A bigger bum? I have to go to the bathroom. And I really can't wait until we get to your 
Incredible facilities. Pull into the next petrol station, will you, Rupert? Thank you so much. Oh, by the way, don't even think of trying to escape. It might just be your last thought. But if I did escape, it would prove fatal for you and your friends, wouldn't it? If I could get to a U.S. consulate, your little game would be over. Do you really think so? I don't believe that your compatriots would lift a feather to help you. Your husband is a traitor to the United States. And I believe that, in fact, they may be relieved to discover that he has finally vanished for good. Anyway, that's exactly what would happen if you talk to any American. You're incredibly confident, aren't you? Yes, with reason. We've agents everywhere. And if you escape, not only would we track you down very quickly, but we would know everyone that you contacted before we caught you. I find that hard to believe. Well, we found you, didn't we? And in spite of your very clever husband's very desperate precautions, think of that. Hmm? Oh, look, there's an ultra-modern petrol station. Pull in, will you, Rupert? Hi, this is John Russell. Oh, dear, Sorry, another one of those answer answering machines. So help me if he says, please leave a message at the beep, I'll scream. Returning your call as soon as possible. Oh, how sweet. Hello, Jonathan. This is Dorian Lord. I think I have something that you might really enjoy. So, would you please come over as soon as possible? Ciao. Everybody's got a chain. Even Jonathan Russell. So let's hope that this will yank some interest out of our ambitious young detective. Well, thank you very much for the invitation, but I'm going on vacation. Oh, oh you'll have the greatest party ever, though. Thanks. Uh, by the way, is, uh, is Jean-Claude on duty? Jean-Claude? Why? Well, n nothing in particular. Just I, I was in the neighborhood. I figured I, I would be neighborly. Well, I don't think that's a good idea, Wanda. He's uh, supervising the gardening crew in the South Lawn. In the South Lawn? Well, I, I wouldn't get in his way or anything. The South Lawn. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Wanda. Bye. Anybody hear her say her phone was out of order? Obviously, she stopped by to see Jean-Claude. <laughs> the hell am I running? A dating service? Oh, Asa. They're perfect for each other. I mean, Jean-Claude obviously must miss his friends from Malakava. Wanda could use some companionship. Yeah? She needs companionship. Why don't she get some guy at the diner? Leave my man alone when he's working. Stop chasing him. Asa! Oh, all right. Forget it. I got a party to attend to. Uh, I'll see you all later. <laughs> and Asa Jeb Stewart Buchanan makes a quick tactical retreat. Because he knew he was in the wrong. Oh, sweetheart, you ought to know by now that scolding him isn't going to do any good. That's true. He's too big to put over my knee anyway. Mm -hmm. You better lighten up or he'll cancel that party for us. And I don't want that to happen because I'm planning on parading you around on my own. Well, then I will leave the old bear alone. It's going to be a terrific party. Oh, don't everybody run at once. I'll get it. Hello. Hello, Vicky. It's Tina. Hello, Tina. Look, I have to see you right away. Can you come over to my room? No, I'm sorry. I'm very busy. If you caught me earlier, maybe, but no. I couldn't have. I mean, I, it just happened. What did? Look, I have an unexpected visitor here. It's a... Shh, shh, don't say my name, please. Tina! Look, I have a good friend of yours here, and she really needs to see you right away. What friend? What are you talking about? Look, I can't say any more about it. Just, just come over here, okay? I'm at 434 River Street, room... Four. And look, it's very important. You'll understand what this is all about when you get here. I, I don't know. Maybe Clint and I will come over later. No! No, don't bring Clint. Your, your friend needs to see you alone. This 
This is very strange, Tina. Look, I know it sounds very strange, but believe me, it isn't. Well, I can't promise anything. Please, you have to come. I'll see, Tina. Goodbye. Is she coming? Well, I hope so. Why didn't you want me to tell her who you were? Because the phones are bugged. All the phones are bugged, and everybody knows that the police would be over here in ten seconds, of course. Yeah, of course. drop by and see where you were living. Oh, you mean how I'm living, don't you? It's a little modest. There's not enough closet space, but it'll do for now. Tina, don't you think this is overkill? I don't know what you mean. Now, why are you putting on this act for? Now, you're not destitute. You can afford better than this. No, I can't. I really can't. You know, I'm not going to dip into the money I already have saved because I don't know how long I'm going to have to live on that. So this is just going to have to do for now, and that is that. Well, if you're that low on cash, then let me write you a check. No. Why not? Because first off, I don't want to think of myself as a charity case, all right? And also, people are just going to think the obvious, and I don't think that either one of us can afford that. Okay, then at least consider a loan. No. No, absolutely not. No, for once in my life, I am determined to pull myself up entirely on my own. Well, that's a long pull. Well, that's why I'm so determined. You know, one day I'm going to have my own mansion and I am going to get it by being realistic. So this place is going to be very good for that purpose. Well, realism never got starker than this. Does this door lead to another room? No, don't open that. No, it's just, it's, it's filled with all sorts of junk, you know, and it's all going to fall right out if you open that. Tina, how long can you stay in a place like this? Well, I don't know. I guess we'll just see, won't we? But, but I want to thank you for uh, your generosity and for your, your offer and everything, I'm, I'm very grateful. And you're really not grandstanding for everyone's benefit? Is that what you thought? No. But there's a lot of people that have been trying to convince me of it. Well, then there's a lot of people that are wrong. I hope so. Well, I hope you're not too proud to ask for my help if you need it. Oh, no, no, I'll be fine. But if I need any help, you will be the first to know. Thanks again, Richard. Okay. I'll see you soon. Bye. You can come out now, Lita. Still thinking about Tina's mystery call? It's very bizarre. It's not bizarre, honey. It's very cunning. She's setting you up. Well, that thought crossed my mind, but I don't really want to believe it. Why do you think she went to work at Wanda's diner? Why do you think she moved into that, uh, that rooming house? She wants you to walk in there with her dressed like Cinderella before the ball. All of a sudden, a couple dozen photographers will show up and the flash bulbs will go to popping. No, darling. I think if she, if she if this were really a setup, she would have given me a much better excuse to get me over there. She sounded genuinely concerned. I'm telling you, she's setting you up. No, I don't think it is a setup. Besides, she sounded as if she was being evasive, as if there really were somebody standing right next to her. Now, what if it is a friend of mine, a friend who's in trouble? If it were, would Tina care? I don't know, but she's got my curiosity going. That and your kind-hearted instincts. Well. Clint, I have to go. Vicky, damn it. All right. I'll go with you. No, you can't. She said I had to come along. I'm going to wring that girl's neck. 
You know, sweetheart, maybe if you just wouldn't show up, maybe Tina would finally get the idea that she cannot keep on manipulating you. But what if it really is a friend who is in trouble? Oh, this is ridiculous! I am not going to get mad at you. I'm not going to fight with you. Tina would like nothing better than that, but she had better not be crying wolf! Sweetheart, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Remember one thing. The last time the little boy cried wolf, the wolf gobbled him up. <laughs> right. 7 p.m. flight to the end. Flight number 402. Bud Van Dyke. Thank you. Finally got through, my, uh, my flight's confirmed. So you're all set. Hey, come on, don't look like it's the end of the world. Well, it could be the end of our world. You never know. As soon as I find David and Jenny, and I know they're safe, I will be back. I just have this fear that you'll go over there and find her alone, and the two of you will just go off together, and I'll never see you again. Yeah, the romantic part of Jenny and me is history, OK? We're just friends, believe me. Jenny wouldn't have it any other way. No, she didn't want you the old way. But when she sees the sacrifices that you've been making, she'd have to be stupid and blind not to see how wonderful the new Brad is. Hey, well, I would have to be stupid and blind not to come back to this one woman fan club of mine. You make it sound right. It is. You can bet on it. Just like I bet on Connie Young. Honey, I'm just so afraid for you. Hey, come on. I've been shot at before. I've had boats blown up around me. I'm still in one piece. I'll be back. Well, at least let me take you to the airport. No, okay? no, it's too risky. There could be enemy agents watching for European flights. Hoping that friends will lead them to the Ronaldo's, right? Exactly. So, I'll take a cab later, okay? Meanwhile, I have a few things I have to take care of. Well, I'll drop you in town. I was supposed to be over at Dorian's right now, anyway. You kept the high and mighty Dorian Lord Cowson wi waiting just for me? <laughs> you, you really do think I'm something special, don't you? Mrs. Rinaldi, but don't let's waste too much time, shall we? Do you mind? Or is there no such thing as privacy in your people's democratic republic? Rupert, give her some privacy, will you? Thank you so much. However, Rupert will be standing outside your door. Stay on top of Cassie and Dorian. Ingratiate yourself further. We have to know what they plan to do if they think the Rinaldis have been kidnapped. Cassie? Craig, hi. Hello. Hey, hi. You look lovely. Thank you. I uh, called Vienna about your friends, the Vernons. Did you hear anything? 
No, unfortunately, no one knows anything. Uh, they seem to have vanished. Oh, I see. Thanks for going to all the trouble, really. Oh, no trouble at all. No trouble at all. But I, I'm happy to report that I've been more successful with my antique hunting. Really? Did you find anything interesting? Yes. A couple of primitive paintings, a <laughs> set of uh, turtleback chairs, and my great find was a 19th century watch collection. Would you like to see it? You mean go up to your room? Well, no, not necessarily. I could bring it down here if that would be more comfortable <laughs> for you. <laughs> uh, do you have a few minutes? Sure. I'll be right back. Okay. So, Rob. what's going on with you and, uh, what's his face? Looks like he's putting the moves on you. And why would you be so concerned? Hey, I'm sorry, I did not mean anything by that. It's just that I think the guy's weird, that's all. Well, you checked Craig out yourself. I mean, he's a legitimate antique collector. Who happens to be very interested in Brad and Jenny Vernon. <sighs> Since when do you have so much insight into people? I mean, you were wrong about Ivan Kipling. And you were wrong about Bobby Blue. Okay, okay. So, my track record sticks, all right? I still think this guy's a creep. And I think all I'm doing is suggesting to you that you think about it. And you don't be so quick to believe everything this man says. Your father's life could depend on it. I'm not going to go on life being suspicious of people. So if it's all the same to you, I'm going to go on trusting him. Dory, I'm sorry I'm late. But I've got the synopsis on the Miller book for the taping tomorrow. Right, just put it anywhere. Thank you. Well, now, I thought you said you wanted to see it right away. Uh, I've got more important things on my mind right now. Oh, well, whatever it is, you are certainly dressed to kill. <laughs> Thank you. Come on, let's sit down. I'll oh. tell you about it. I've just left a message on Jonathan Russell's answering machine. I'm hoping he's going to come right over. Oh, well, what's going on with you two? I've decided to invite him to Ace's big soiree. Oh, great. Great. I hope he comes. Why wouldn't he? Well, nothing personal, Dorian. Uh, but didn't you tell me that he's been acting a bit standoffish to you lately? More than just a bit. But I'm hoping that the prospect of prospective new clients will uh, lure him there. Will help him get over his reluctance anyway. Oh, I hope, I hope. Well, I've been having my own share of troubles with a reluctant man. Oh, no, Brad. Yeah. I think I've pushed him a little too hard the last few days. How he pushed him right into the arms of Jenny. You mean he's going to Vienna? Oh, he booked a flight tonight. Why is it that everybody suddenly wants to find Jenny and David? Jenny and David don't want to be found. Oh, I know. And Brad will only tell me so much. Let me tell you something, just from my own experience. Don't push Jonathan too hard, okay, Dorian? Don't worry. He won't even know he's being pushed. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, there's a bell. Uh, Emma, would you please get that? Thank you. Do I really look all right? Perfect. Jonathan. I see you got my message. Obviously. What is it this time? She's not coming. It's been hours. Lita, it's only been an hour. Now, would you please sit down and relax? Well, Lolly, I guess we were wrong. Vicky isn't our friend after all. She forgot all about us the minute she left Mountain View. She would never do that. Well, she isn't here right now. Look, Tina, I have to go. No, Lita, please, no. No, you can't. Look, it isn't safe for you. It's much safer for you, for you to stay right here rather than going out in the world all on your own. But I'm not alone. I, I have Lolly. Yeah, but she can't help you. And you're someone who needs help. How do you know that? Look, Lita, a couple years ago, I... I was like you in some ways. You know, I was very frightened and... and helpless. I was always making all the wrong moves. It's just been in the past few months, you know, that I've... I've been able to take charge of my life and, uh, like, make some real positive changes. Uh, I don't know, Tina. If you call this positive changes, you must have been really bad off. I mean... They'd give you better rooms than this at Mountain View. Look, I'm not just talking about material things. And it took me a long time to understand that. But, Lita, I am right exactly where I want to be. It's the police! I'm going to hide, Tina!
Vicky, come in. So this is it, eh? The squalor that I have condemned you to? Why don't I send over some of your curtains? They should liven things up a bit. May I leave now? That was very unkind. So was getting me over here on false pretenses. I did nothing of the sort. Then where is my mystery friend? Your friend would have greeted you herself, but she was afraid to lose her freedom. Lita, honey, it's all right. You can come out. It's Vicky. Lita! Hello, Vicky. Don't you want to say hello to Lolly? Oh, my goodness, Lita. Sweetheart. And Lolly. Hello, Lolly. What are you two doing here? Running away. Oh, thank you for coming to help us. How did she? Well, she wandered into Wanda's diner. And, well, she saw Rafe and she got scared, so she borrowed my key and she came here. Oh, Lida, honey, you shouldn't have run away. I had to, Vicky. I had to. Please don't be angry with me. Oh, no, no. Come on, I'm not angry with you. It's just when you left Mountain View, everyone made fun of me. You were my only friend, and I was so unhappy there. But you had Dr. Spender. She likes you. But she's not you. You're my only real friend, Vicky. You and Lolly, of course. Oh, Vicky. I missed you so much. So much. Everything's gonna be all right now. I promise you. From now on, everything's gonna be just fine. Why do you always expect the worst of people? I don't. I just don't believe this guy's act. That's all. What if all. it's not an act? <sighs> you know what your problem is, Cassie? You think the world is a perfect little place. You're always looking for the goodness in everybody, and that's fine. But sometimes you have to accept the fact that maybe there just isn't any goodness there. Not everybody in the world's nice. Yes, but they're not all enemy agents and killers either. Can we just drop the decibel level here just a tad, Let's please? drop the whole subject. Fine. Okay, here comes George. Fine. Ah, Mr. Coronel. Hi. Now, since you're here, I'll show you my treasures, too. An excellent collection of 19th century watches I found just outside of town, thanks to Cassie. Not very fascinating? Breathtaking. I apologize for Rob. Don't bother. Craig, a friend of mine, Ace of Buchanan, is having a party. Ace of Buchanan? Well, you travel in powerful circles, don't you? I wanted to know if you'd like to come with me. Excuse me, but I think I have something trivial to take care of. There are going to be a lot of people there who are interested in buying and selling antiques. So. Oh, say no more. I'd be delighted to act as your escort. Although I think your invitation is, uh, upset Rob. He'll get over it. Are you sure? I'd hate to be part of a, a lasting disagreement. Don't worry about it. It's none of his business anymore anyway. Well, if you say there'll be no trouble. No trouble at all. So the synopsis is on the desk there, so I hope it's helpful for you. Thank you very much, Okay, Connie. I'll talk to you later. Bye, Jonathan. Things do have a way of bringing me back here, don't they? Oh, I really appreciate you coming over right away. Well, I couldn't stand the suspense. I mean, first a misplaced notebook and a bounced check. What is it this time? Oh, come on, you're gonna have to forgive me. I already admitted I made a terrible mistake by announcing on my television show that you're a private detective. Uh, Dorian, I mean, a mistake to you is three months of long, hard work to me, and that was shot to hell. Yes, but didn't I repair the damage with that $10,000 check? <laughs> Well, that helped pay for the time I wasted, but my reputation still hasn't recovered. Maybe we can repair the damage to your reputation in a different way. Now, you do have me intrigued. Oh, good. That's a step in the right direction. Jonathan, what would you say if I told you that I know a way that you can recoup all of your losses? Well, I would say that you're something more than just another pretty face.
I can't. She's had enough time. Get her out of there. Okay, Mrs. Rinaldi. Mrs. Rinaldi. Open it. But Dirk. I said open it. Called you over. Yes, yes, and I'm very glad you did, Tina. Thank you. I think that I will take Lida back to Aces with me, okay? And then we can call Dr. Spender and we'll have her come by. No, I'm not going with you. I don't want to go. Uh, Lida, I'm really only trying to do what's best for you, and I don't want Dr. Spender to be worried. I'm sure by now she's very, very concerned that you're, that you're lost or that you're hurt. But you know I'm not. Vicky, I think maybe we're moving too fast. Maybe we just ought to sit down and, you know, chat for a little while. Yes, yes, you're probably right. Oh, could we, Vicky? Could we talk like we used to? Well, and I really don't think Aces is the right place for her. Oh, no. Oh, oh, you're right, with all the preparations for the party going on, of course. A party? I haven't been to a party in a long, long time. What kind of a party? A, a victory celebration. With music? Yes, with music. For dancing? Yes, for dancing. A party. Oh, I've only been to one party, but that was a long time ago when I was really little and I could hardly talk. But there was no music and no dancing. If I were invited, I'd wear a beautiful dress. And Lolly and I could dance, and people would talk to us because they wouldn't know we were from Mountain View, and... Well... People would be nice to me, and I would be nice to them. Well, if, if Lita could be around some regular people, maybe that would be very therapeutic to her. Well, it could also be a shock, Tina. I don't really think you and I should play doctor. Oh, please, Vicky. Please, I would be so good. <laughs> Lolly and I would be really quiet. We wouldn't say a word if you didn't want us to. Here, read for yourself. Well? Well, it's nice paper. Very high quality stock. Never mind the paper. What about the words? Well, the words, it's nice. Raised lettering, isn't it? Jonathan, do you accept? This is it. An invitation to Asa Buchanan's party is the golden opportunity of a lifetime. Now, surely a man who makes his living the way you do can deduce the reason behind the invitation. Oh, I think I can. I'm just not sure what conclusion you've reached. Ah, it's really very simple. You see, there are going to be a lot of people, elite people from Landview there with a lot of power, a lot of money, the kind of people who have deep, dark secrets that other people would like to find out. Now, of course, this would include husbands, wives, business partners, competitors. 24 carat skeletons in walk-in closets, huh? Exactly. Mm. Now, of course, as a member of uh, television journalism, I would never, ever be able to be privy to this information. And if I did, I'd have to go public with it, and you would have nothing to investigate. However, I am willing to shepherd you around this party and make sure that you get introduced to the right people. Well, that's quite an offer, Dory. One has to choose. Oh, Jean-Claude, are you sure that they have enough glasses? Pamela, you will have plenty of glasses and dishes and everything else your party requires. But unless you regain some of your Malakeva calm, you won't enjoy your own party. 
Jean-Claude, this is my very first party as Mrs. Ace of Buchanan. Now, everything has to be perfect. It will. What possibly could prevent it? <sighs> Ace, are you in here? Guess who? Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I guess I should have waited for Adam to let me in, but I just feel so at home here. I, I forget. <laughs> you do? Um, I should introduce myself. I, I'm uh, Becky Lee Abbott, Ace's ex-wife. And you are? Oh, I'm, I'm Pamela Buchanan, Ace's current wife. Uh, excuse me, Mrs. Lord, but there's someone to see Cassie, uh, uh, Mr. Bud Van Dyke. Oh, tell him we're busy, no, Emma. No, please, Emma, send him in. Oh, yes, ma'am. Thank you, Cassie. One usually waits to be admitted, Mr. Van Dyke. I'm sorry, but this couldn't wait. Uh, Emma, that'll be all, thank you. Oh, yes, miss. So what is the big emergency, Mr. Van Dyke? I wanted to ask Cassie a few questions before I go. Where are you going? Austria. I'm going to find David and Jenny. <sighs> Hello, David. Dirk asked me to introduce myself. It's calling in reinforcements. I'm Greta Lindauer. I've been assigned to your case. My case. What wonderful terminology. Where's Monica? Invading Afghanistan? How refreshing. A man with a sense of humor in a difficult situation. Monica's left for Vienna. She's seeing to your quarters there. Is that where you've taken Jenny? Why don't we get to know each other better first? Forget it. You're not getting one ounce of cooperation from me until I see my wife face to face. You understand that? That attitude won't get us anywhere. Neither is going to be harming my wife. But she hasn't been harmed. Not yet. But if you persist at being so uncooperative, well, you may be bringing to an untimely death the very person you're hoping to protect. Now you listen to me. If anything happens to Jenny, if you harm her in if any way... You spare us your threats. Same to you, pal. If anything happens to Jenny, Nothing's I'm telling both of you... going to happen to Jenny. As long as you're reasonable. Isn't that right, Dirk? Oh, well, Greta, my dear, there's been a slight change of plans. to be home. Yeah, I can't uh, wait to move back in. Heron says he might have the house ready in about two weeks. Yeah. So, what's this, uh, where's his new address you wanted to show me? Oh, honey, that was just an excuse to get you up here. Since when do you need an excuse to get me up here? Uh, darling, I have to talk to you. Talk? Mm, about Lita. Oh, well, honey, she seems uh, to be having a good time here and so giving her the grand tour, and she's all oohs and ahs. I know, darling. The point is that she's so excited about going to this party tonight. And the more I think about it, the more convinced I am that it is a dreadful mistake. Dreadful mistake? Mm-hmm. The only one I know who makes dreadful mistakes is uh, you-know-who. You got it. Tina. Guess who suggested she go to the party in the first place? Oh. I should have known. Even when she tries to help someone, she manages to make trouble for everyone else. Oh, darling, I don't want to hurt Lita's feelings. Quite the contrary, it's her very fragile feelings that I'm concerned about. Are you afraid the party will be too much for her? Oh, please, a house full of strangers, music, dancing, champagne, that's a lot for anyone to handle. But for a girl who's been in an institution for years? Hmm. Well, if there's some way to keep her close, you know, in case she started feeling overwhelmed. I know, I thought of that too, but we cannot stay by her side all evening, darling. The party is in our honor. I mean, people are going to be pulling at us in all directions, right? Which means poor Lita will be all by her lonesome. Yeah, and that's not fair to her either, because somebody may very well, although inadvertently, say something wrong or do something wrong, and she would have only one response. To run away again. 
Honey, she needs the security of the sanitarium. She needs the comfort and the understanding of the staff there. And the last thing she needs is the complex social world of one of Ace's. Oh, I'm sorry. This house has so many doors. How do you keep from getting lost? Well, it's not easy. Come in, darling. Come in. Wow. Is this your bedroom? Mm -hmm. All of it? Yeah. Do you like it? I almost expect to see mattresses piled up to the ceiling. <laughs> you know, like in that fairy tale, the, the princess and the pea? Oh, that's one of my favorites. It's one of Lolly's, too. This whole house is like a fairy tale castle. And tonight, I'm going to be the princess at the ball. Hey, Kitty, I'm sorry that you had to find out this way. I assumed Daisy would have told you that we were married. Well, I mean, I don't know why I should be shocked. Asa could never stand to be alone for more than a second. No offense, but this is even quick for him. Well, it's, this is a little more complicated than you think. When I left for Memphis, he wasn't seeing anybody that I know of. I mean... Well, uh, there's an awful lot that you don't know. Uh, why don't you put your suitcase down and just come over here and sit down? Okay. I'll try to explain it. Mm hmm You see, sit down. You see, I have known Asa for a long time. Well, how long is long? Ten years. Ten. Well, I mean, I didn't know him as Asa Buchanan. I knew him as Captain Jeb Stewart, a merchant marine. And... Wait, 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 slow down. My, my head is starting to spin here. And what oh, is dear. it that you're trying to... I'm not going to tell you this. <sighs> you see, I was raised on a very small island in the South Pacific. Ma Malakava? New one to me. Well, it's very remote, which is the reason why I didn't know that my husband, I mean, Captain Jeb Stewart, was really Asa Buchanan. <laughs> Are you trying to tell me that the whole time I was married to Asa, he was married to you, too? I'm afraid so. Put me in the hen house and call me a rooster. Well, Becky Lee, I know this must come as a terrible shock to you, and I'm sorry. A shock? I, I don't know whether to laugh or wring his neck. I mean, when I think about what he put me through, the guilt I felt for, for breaking up our marriage, the grief he put me through for going off with Jesse when the whole time he was having this other life in the South Pacific. What do you call that? Oh, uh, Captain's Paradise. A Captain's, yeah, that's right. I mean, he was putting me through hell, and he was having paradise on the side. I can't believe this. Uh, thank you, Lee. Uh, Jean-Claude told me you're right. Oh, I see you met uh, Pamela. Yes, I, I uh, most certainly have. And that's all you found in the cottage? Yes, the original sheet music for Jenny's theme. That doesn't prove that David and Jenny were abducted. David would never have left it there. Now, I think your mother's right. It doesn't really prove anything, but at least it gives us something to go on. You know, Brad, it's not going to be easy. Because by now, David and Jenny's trail could be completely cold. Well, I won't know that until I get there, but maybe somebody in town saw them leave. I'll just have to knock on every door until I get an answer. You know, you would do a lot better if you had somebody there to help you. Wait a minute, Cassie, you're not suggesting that you go. It only makes sense. I mean, I've been to Burnvold already. I know my way around. N it's out of the question. Brad, tell her. Yeah, I'm afraid I'm going to have to agree with your mother again. But, wait, think about it. Look, if Bud Van Dyke goes there by himself, people will be suspicious. They'll ask questions. Nobody will open up to you. And if I go with you? Well, I could pose as your girlfriend. We would just be another American couple trying to see well, the sights. Well, I'm uh, flattered, but I don't think so. I don't know. Absolutely. It's the most ridiculous <clears throat> idea I've ever heard. Now, wait a second. David is my father. If he's left any clues of any kind for people to come and help him, I would recognize them faster than anybody else. Cassie, if they have been abducted, you could be recognized. So could you too, Brad. Please, Dorian, don't worry about me. I know my way around. I am not worried about you. I am worried about my daughter, whose life will be in danger, whether she goes with you or not. Mom, please. Cassie, I'm sorry. Brad, you listen up. This is the worst mistake you have ever made in your life. So cancel the trip to Austria, for all our sakes. What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. Nothing is at Something's all. happened to her. What have you done with her? Tell me! Let me of me! What have you done with her? I have done nothing to her. She's safely on the other side of the border and will only remain there if you can keep yourself in trouble. David, there's no reason for violence. 
there is if he's lying. I'm fed up with your accusations. Go back to your room. I'll Dita will drag you there if it's up to you. David, do what he says. There's no reason to harm you or your wife. Trust me. Rest assured, I trust neither one of you. I have the same feeling. I could learn to hate that man. Uh, tell me what happened. Well, uh, we had some problem on the way to the border. What sort of problem? Well, it could happen to any one of us. Damn it. Now tell me. Jenny escaped, and that idiot Wolpert. What are we going to do? I haven't decided yet. There's only one solution. We must kill David Rinaldi. You realize what Jenny Rinaldi is going to do. The first thing she gets out, she's going to run right to the first police station she finds. They could come barging through that door any moment. No. Jenny won't run to the police. With her husband held against her will, she'll do anything she can to free him. <laughs> oh, no, she'll do everything to keep him alive. She knows perfectly well that we wouldn't hesitate to kill him if she exposes us. Jenny Rinaldi loves her husband too much to risk his life. So, you're suggesting we do nothing? Of course not. We immediately proceed to put our alternative plan. Do you really think that... We have no choice. Jenny Rinaldi can't have got that far. And with luck, our agents will find her and bring her back. Until then, David Rinaldi will be kept in blissful ignorance. So long as he believes that she is on the other side of the border and waiting for him to join her, he will do as we wish. So while uh, David believes Jenny is behind the Iron Curtain, the rest of the world must believe that she is by her husband's side. <laughs> exactly. And with a gifted woman like you, the world will believe just that. Seems I will have my hour upon the stage after all. You will go to Vienna, and you will assume the role of Mrs. Jenny Rinaldi. Dorian, I know what I'm doing. He's trying to save David and Jenny's life. Why can't you see that? <sighs> Cassie, listen, has it occurred to either one of you that maybe Jenny and David saw the ad in the National Intruder, took it to heart, and decided to leave Austria before they were found? Without making any attempt to let me know that they received my message. That does not sound like the Jenny I know. Would you grow up? The Jenny you know is gone. She is gone with her new husband to a new life, which never will include you. I have accepted that. No, you haven't, but accept this. You go to Europe, you'll probably make the situation worse. Definitely you'll make it worse. Not just for Jenny and David, but for a lot of other people you profess to be concerned about. Mom, you're not even trying to understand what is going on here. Cassie, you could end up a victim all in, in all of this, along with a whole host of other victims. How? How? Brad, if you go to Bernwald and you go banging on a lot of doors, don't you think the Secret Service agents, the foreign ones, are going to hear about it? I'm not planning on banging on any doors. My methods will be slightly more subtle than that. They can be twice as subtle as you. You're going to lead them right to Jenny and David, which is what you're trying to avoid, isn't it? That's a chance I'll have to take. That we'll have to take. No. no. Brad, I can't believe you're siding with her. Cassie, for my sake, please, stay here and land But Brad, I you need you here. If Jenny and David try and contact the States, then you can let me know. Absolutely. You are not to involve her in any way. Do you understand? You can lose your life for Jenny and David, but you are not to endanger my daughters. I could talk till I'm blue in the face, and you still wouldn't understand. I've got to run. I've got another stop to make. Cassie, keep your fingers crossed. Vlad, if you hear anything, please let me know. Not if. When. I'm not coming back until I find David and Jenny. Wait a second. Where are you going? Cassie, no. Mom. No. Well, uh, have uh, you two had a chance to have a chat? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's that's nice. That's that's very nice. Oh, Becky Lee, bring me the news from Memphis. Oh, Ace, so the news from Memphis is pretty tame compared to the news around here. Well, how's my boy doing? I mean, can Drew ride the little pony I sent him for his birthday? 
He took a spill, but he got back up again. <laughs> That's my boy. Hey, how's old Jesse? Oh, he's just fine, Asa. Whole family's just fine, and I am so glad to see that your whole enormous and ever-expanding family is doing just fine, too. Well, well, Pam and I have been blessed, haven't we? Uh, and I'm also happy to hear that you and Jesse have found happiness like Pam and I share. Well, but you two have had so much more time to find that happiness, and you've been being blessed for, what is it, ten years now, Asa? <clears throat> uh, uh, Pam, <laughs> Pam must have explained uh, the unique situation surrounding our marriage. No, no, no. I think, I think really that you ought to do the explaining. I'm sure that you and Becky Lee have an awful lot to talk oh, about. Pam, Pam, don't go. Don't go. Look, whatever has gone on between me and you, Asa, or me, you, and Pam, or I, I assume there was only one island, was there, Sailor? Oh, of course, just one. Okay, well, great it's question. Yesterday's cornbread, and there's no use in serving it up stale today. I told you, Pam, is she something? Is she something, huh? Oh, yes, yeah, she's definitely something. Taking it a lot better than I did. Becky Lee, his heart is as big as the whole state of Tennessee. Oh, don't butter me up, Asa. I'm just glad you found somebody as sweet and understanding as this lady seems to be. I feel for you, honey. It's quite a load you got here. <laughs> Becky Lee, I have a feeling you and I are going to get along just fine. Pamela, how would you like to come over and catch my show at Elmo's tonight? Maybe you could drag him along, too. Oh, I would love to. I... Yeah? Oh, we can't. Tonight we're having a party for Clint and Vicky. Oh, hold on, Becky. Oh. It's not a party. It's a social event of the year. I tell you, after you're through singing, why don't you join us for the celebration? Oh, I'm sorry, I can't. I've got a show after... Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, your party will probably be done before that. Why don't you bring everybody over for the second show? Oh, could we, Asa, please? It would be so much fun. Well, sure, it sounds great to me, and all well, your old friends would like to see and hear you sing again, I'm sure. Ah, I can't wait to see them. Clint and Vicky and, and Larry and Mimi and everybody. There's one other guy you haven't seen for a long, long time. <laughs> Richard Abbott. Hey, Theo. Hey. I just checked. Everything is set for tonight. Oh, great. What about our special attraction? Well, I picked Becky Lee up at the airport. I took her to Aces, and she'll be here in a few hours to set up. Great. Thank you so much. Aren't you forgetting something? I held up my end of the bargain. She's here. Two shows, as promised. And I'm grateful. Well, darling, I don't want your gratitude. Why don't you hold up your end of the deal, huh? Hand over the money. Pretty, please. Honey, we got a big show to do tonight. I don't have time to discuss this now, okay? Well, you can make the time, Theo. Uh, I mean, I spent hours getting Becky Lee to agree, to agree to sing here. Wait a minute. I thought you said she jumped at the chance when she heard it was for charity. Well, she did, but we had to work out her time on her busy schedule, and then there was the question of her appearance fee. What appearance fee? Now, Clover, everybody is donating their services tonight. And Becky Lee is no exception, but she does have expenses. Theo, the lady is a star. She travels like a star. She's got airfare, accommodations, per diem, musicians, Okay, equipment. okay, 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 okay. What's the bottom line? Becky's usual honorarium for such appearances is $10,000. What? <laughs> well, sometimes it's more, but as a personal favor to me, she was willing to compromise. Yeah? Well, as a personal favor to me, you can tell her she is out of her gourd. Theo! No, on second thought, you can tell her to forget it, that we'll do fine without her, okay? Well, you may be, but what about your customers? Hey, I saw that reservations book. Two whole shows are sold out solid. Now, if that's a lot of disappointment for very little money. Very little money? $10,000 you call very little money? What's that going to do to the contribution we're trying to make to the hospital? Well, you can still make your donation. All she wants is her fair and reasonable expenses. I don't call $10,000 fair and reasonable. That is piracy, Clover. And it... If it weren't too late to back out, I wouldn't even give you the bus fare back to Memphis. No, correction. You wouldn't give it to me. Me. You? I am her agent on this one, remember? Oh, and I forgot to mention, for tax purposes only, she prefers payment in cash. <laughs> and I thought she was like her music. Sweet, sincere. Her theme song ought to be, I can't get no satisfaction. Oh, but Theo, you can satisfy her. All you gotta do is reach into your cash register and start counting out the bills. So what I'm trying to say to you is that although I realize you would like to go to the party very, very much, I don't really think it would be such a good idea. Oh, darling, I'm sorry. I, I, I know you think we're taking something wonderful away from you, but we're not. In fact, we're giving you something much more wonderful instead. Like what? Like, like... Like a home, for one thing. And, and like friends, like... 
friends who good friends who want to take care of you. That's look out right. For you. Just like you took care of me and looked out for me when I was at Mountain View. Mountain View, you can't send me back there. Your friends there are missing you. They're worried about you. They're not my friends. But they are your friends, and they want you to come back so that they can help you get better. But I am better. I'm not going back to that place. Lita, we, look, we don't want to force you, but we'd just like you to try and understand. You lied to me, Vicky. You said I could go to the party. You said I could treat this place like it was my home. I'm never going to trust you again, not ever. No, look, Please don't say that. Lita, you're being awfully hard on Vicky. And there's, there's someone else's feelings involved here, too, you know. Whose? Lolly. Lolly's? Well, yes. Don't you think she misses her old home? I mean, the nurses at Mountain View looked out for her, too, didn't they? Yes, in a way, I suppose. And uh, I'll bet that she liked taking walks in the gardens with you. Well, she did like the tulips. Who wouldn't? And I'll bet they're in bloom right now. You know, I'll bet everyone at Mountain View Wishes she were back there, back home where she belongs. Well, that is Lolly's home, too. I, I guess I forgot about that. You know, I bet if you took her home, you'd make her very happy. And Vicky and I will still be able to come up and visit you, both of you. You will? Of course. Sure we will. Sure. And you know what? When you and Lolly are both able to leave the sanitarium, we're going to throw you a party. I mean, a humdinger of a party. <laughs> Just for the two. A party for us. Lolly, did you hear that? What do you say? Uh, can we call Dr. Spender and tell her to come over and pick you and Lolly up? <laughs> OK, Clint. I'm ready to go home. Your suspicion is quite natural, but it's utterly unfounded. Nothing's happened to Jenny. What was that about a change of plans? Oh, that's merely because we're accelerating everything now that she's crossed the border. There's really no reason left for us to remain here. Sorry, but I'm not going anywhere until I at least speak to my wife, so I suggest you get her on the phone. Then I suggest that you come off your high horse. American agents here are free to go anywhere in Austria, and I'm sure they've already tapped our phone here. Well, then take me to a payphone, and I will talk to her from there. Well, but I want proof that she is alive and that you haven't harmed her in any way. You must have realized in your tiny mind that killing Jenny is going to ruin our plan for you. I don't give a damn about you or your plans. I only know my wife isn't here. <laughs> you know it. I know it. But to the rest of the world, you are and remain a loving couple whose only wish is to remain quiet. And of course, to seek asylum in a new country. You're going to have a tough time, it seems to me, convincing the rest of the world of that without Jenny here with me. It may not be as tough as all that, and we can discuss it in the car. Come along. Wait a minute. Where are we going? No, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to mention it. You're going to your next and last temporary abode. Vienna. Vienna? I'd like to make a person-to-person -person call to the United States, please. Person-to-person -person call to the United States. Could I have the overseas operator? Yes, operator, I'd like to make a person-to-person -person call to the United States, please. Landview, Pennsylvania, Mrs. Clint Buchanan. No, I don't... Mrs. Clint Buchanan, I don't have the number. Person to person. A collect, a collect call. Just reverse the charges. A collect call. Please, this is, no, I'm sorry. Op operator, 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 please. Operator. One life to live will continue in a moment.
Operator? Operator, you don't understand. Just, I'm in, I'm in a lot of trouble. Somebody's trying to, to kill me. To kill. I need to make a, I need to make a person-to-person -person call to Mrs. Clint. You've got to help me, please. Somebody's going to kill me. And I, I need her to help me, please. She's the only one that can. It's a person-to-person call. -person it's collect. It's a collect call. No. Don't hang up on me, please. Please don't hang up on me. No, operator. Operator. Yes, Dr. Spender, she's just fine. And Lolly is too. Okay, we'll be waiting for you. Bye-bye. Dr. Spender's pretty mad at me, I'll bet. Oh, you would lose that bet, my dear. She was delighted to hear from us. And she says she's so looking forward to seeing you again and Lolly, too, that she's going to be here very soon to pick you up. Well, then we can just wait right here, can't we? Sweetheart, why don't you go and uh, uh, get ready for this evening? And uh, the three of us will just wait here, Lolly and Lita and myself. Okay. Can I have a hug before you go? <laughs> yeah. You'll come visit me, you promise? You bet I will. Now, you take care of yourself. You take good care of Lolly. Lolly, you take care of Lita, you hear me? <laughs> and I'll see you both very soon, okay? Bye, sweetheart. Here we are, just the two of us. Uh, I mean, the three of us. <laughs> you know, Lita, I, uh, I know that Vicky and I can't take the place of Lolly, and we don't, you know, don't even want to, but we sure would like you to think someday that we're your friends, too. Oh, well, we already do. And we have another good friend, too, don't we, Lolly? Oh, and who's that? Tina. Clint, when you and Vicky come to visit me, will you bring Tina, too? We'll see. We'll see. You know, it's a beautiful day outside. Why don't we go outside and wait for Dr. Spender out there? Okay. Your hand, Princess? <laughs> princess. <laughs> if you had supported me, then maybe Brad would have let me go with him. Haven't you been listening to anything that I've said to you? David has chosen this life on the run with Jenny, and he doesn't care how that decision affects anybody here in Landry. He had no choice. He had no life, no country, no nothing. All he had was Jenny's love, and he took that and he ran for his life. Mrs. Lord, uh, there's another visitor. Craig! Hi, what are you doing here? You, Mom, you remember Craig Stone? Yes, how do you do? Hi. When I learned that you... Um... Dorian, you've been staring at that phone for an hour. Why don't you just pick it up and call him? No, I think it's better if I meet him at the party. Dorian, this isn't Victorian England. You know. It's not Victorian morality that's stopping me. It's common sense. I mean, Jonathan Russell is not a man that you can push too hard or too fast. Well, I certainly have pushed Brad a little too hard these last few days, so I know. Don't tell me you miss him already. Oh, I'd give anything to go to that party with him tonight. Unfortunately, he's off finding Jenny. Oh, perfect timing. For a change, I was about to leave early. Oh, let me guess. Get ready for the big party, one where I think I'm the only person in town who wasn't invited. Tina, there'd been some way to include you. I know, I know, it's not your fault. The party is for Vicky and Clint, and goodness knows I am the last person they would want to see. Well, it is a family celebration. I know. I know, and I am really trying to be big about this, Richard. I really am, but no matter how you look at it, the, the family is throwing this big victory dance over my defeat. <laughs> to new beginnings. Well, I will drink to that. I hope you don't mind if I stick to club soda. Honey, in your delicate condition, I'm surprised you're not craving for pickles and ice cream. <laughs> what I really want is to thank you both for this wonderful party. I can't tell you how much it means to Clint and to me. No, oh, you thank Asa. It was his idea. Well, I can't let a milestone go by in this family without, you know, having some confetti and champagne. And we have an awful lot to celebrate tonight to my next grandchild. Oh, thank you. You and Clint getting land fair back again. Don't forget we got married again. And don't forget Pamela here, without a word, that she did her turn. Look at this room, <laughs> will you? 
I thought there was something different. You redecorated, mm -hmm. hmm? Re redecorated. Mm -hmm. So long, Malakeva. Hello, Landu. <laughs> uh, Pam, I thought that you wanted to make Asa feel at home. He is at home. I just found out that I didn't have to recreate Malakeva in order to have the feelings that we had there. Amen. <laughs> we got a lot to be thankful for. I think that this would be the perfect celebration if all our old friends could be here tonight. Like Jenny. I miss Jenny. I really wish Jenny were here. Well, genius, you've gotten this far now. What are you going to do? gloating tonight. Well, I know you aren't, but we both know why Ace is throwing this party. Well, if you're right, then you won't be missing much, will you? You are missing the whole point here. I love parties. I was even thinking about crashing uh, this Uh, Tina... Uh, but I am not going to give Ace the satisfaction of having to throw me up. Now, that's the mature and sensible approach. Yeah, that's probably why it hurts so much. I tell you what. Look, I don't have to stay at the party all night. Why don't you meet me someplace later? You'd really do that for me? Well, my motives are purely selfish. I'd rather spend the evening with you than spend the evening with Asa making small talk. You know, you have really cheered me up, Richard. I mean, who cares about his rotten old party, right? I'd rather spend the time with you any old day. I tell you what, we'll meet at Elmo's later. Uh, there's going to be a benefit tonight for Landview Hospital. I don't think Elmo's is such a good idea. I don't remember asking for your opinion, Clint. And you are in my office. Now, you can go anywhere you want to. I've even got a couple suggestions for you, but Richard might want to reconsider. Unless you want to run into your ex-wife. Okay, let's go over that. The center section is just a total... Uh, Miss Abbott, can, uh, or can I call you Becky Lee? Sure. Hi, I'm Chip Cooper, resident DJ of this fine establishment. Oh, hi, Chip. Nice to meet you. This is uh, Jeff Robbins, my pianist. We're just rehearsing here. Hey, man, how you doing? Listen, I just want to let you know real quick. I, I don't want to bother you for too long, but uh, I know this room real well. I know the uh -huh. crowd, certainly being DJ, and I certainly know your terrific music, and I would no. love to play backup or, or sing for you if you need you know, any help tonight. Oh, well, thank you so much, Chip. I, I brought a band. Uh, and yeah. I already know my stuff. And... I'll tell you, you're really not missing out on anything because, you know, I couldn't pay anything. I mean, this is a benefit, so... No oh, well, well, you know, uh, <laughs> playing for you would be such a such an honor that uh, I, I'd waive my, my usual um, momentous you, fee. You would do that. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's downright generous of you. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Right, no, no, no big generosity. Uh -huh. It's just, uh, well, not in view of what you've given up to play here for free, you know? Oh, that's no big deal. I, I think it's really an honor to be able to contribute to a, a nice cause like, uh, like the hospital. Well, yeah, you know, I, that's exactly the way I... <laughs> That's exactly the way I look at it, but, you know, I, that's why I'd like to do my, do my bit. Really? You know Elvis? Are you kidding? Me and Elvis were just like this. Oh, my, I can't believe it. Really? Uh, well, see ya. Okay. Becky Lee says she's ready. The band says they're ready. I know that I'm ready. All we've got to do is open the doors and start making money. All right. Well, I am ready for the money, honey. <laughs> yeah, well, don't drool, Clover. It's in the safe in the back. Well, let's go get it. Then yeah, wait a minute. Now, you said that Begley wants her expenses paid in cash. For tax purposes, it's not a big deal. Yes, it's a big deal. I mean, she may not want to claim it as income, but I certainly want to claim it as an expense. So, you don't get $10,000 unless I get Becky Lee's signature on a receipt. You weren't really thinking of going with him, were you? All I'd have to do is ask, yes. Connie, you seem like such a bright, intelligent young woman. 
You walked away from Brad once. My advice to you is keep on walking. I tried, but I just couldn't. I mean, after seeing him again... Listen, can't you see that he is a man without a future? He can't give you any security. He can't give you the kind of life you deserve. Well, whatever life he's offering, I want to share that with him. But what kind of a life is it going to be? I'll tell you, you're going to have to kiss your family and your friends goodbye. You yourself are going to have to live under an assumed name. This is Bud Van Dyke. Yeah, I, I know all that. Do you also know that you're going to be living with a ghost? The gone but not forgotten Jenny Rinaldi. No, uh, his feelings for her have changed. They're not the same. <laughs> you believe that? I have to. No, you don't have to. You don't have to be a convenience for any man. You deserve a fate much better than that. Thanks. I wish I had some of your self-confidence, Dorian. That can be remedied. Just get yourself to a parking lot. Have yourself oh. mugged and then rescued by a truly handsome, gorgeous Sir Lancelot. Well, do you think there are a couple of those running around? Another one like Jonathan. No, I doubt it. The man is one of a kind. Well, so is a Dorian Lord. Oh, stop. Perhaps. <laughs> Perhaps tonight, with the right timing, the right setting, he'll decide that I'm the perfect woman for him. So you understand, Clover? If you don't get Becky Lee's signature on the dotted line, you don't get ten big ones. Oh, Jeff, not that song plays. It brings back too many memories. Um, let's just stick to the new stuff, okay? In the neighborhood, Joy. Please give me a call. Hi. Hi. Oh, he just told me I had the most beautiful eyes he's ever seen. And you believed him? I mean, what an ancient lie. Oh, don't get me wrong. I think you have the most beautiful eyes I've ever seen, too. But at least you know I'm not copping some lying on you. Well, neither was he. And after all the groupies I've seen hanging around you, it's kind of nice to have a fan club of my own. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Club. <sighs> Becky at Elmo's tonight? Yes, it was a last-minute type thing, and that, that's probably why they couldn't do much publicity. That's probably why you uh, haven't heard that she's appearing there tonight. So she's part of the hospital benefit? Part of it. She's the featured attraction. Which is why I stopped by. Richard, I really think that somebody should be there uh, from the banner to cover it, don't you think? like this is some sort of major news event or something. Really, Clint, if you want my opinion. I don't. No, uh, Clint's right. I'll, uh, I'll go down the hall to the entertainment editor. Probably want to cover this one himself. You did this deliberately, didn't you? Who? Me? I didn't do a thing. Oh, no. Did you get me excluded from Ace's party as if I really care about that in the first place? But now you're just going to ruin my, my evening with Richard, too, right? He had a right to know that she's in town. Oh, and you just couldn't wait to tell him now, could you? In fact, I would not be surprised if you and Vicky both invited Becky here just to, just to ruin things for me. <laughs> the world according to Tina. It all begins and ends with you, doesn't it? Tina, I'm, uh, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but... Vicky and I have better things to do than to sit around trying to figure out ways to upset your devious little plans. I don't know what you're talking about. What I am talking about is the fellow that was just here. That's what I'm talking about. You got him all singled out to be your next victim, don't you? Wrong. Right. Now, come off it. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter what I do, does it? You will just never give me a chance, will you? You have had nothing but chances, Tina. You know, you would not be having this, this wonderful victory party if it weren't for me. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. Okay. Because I willingly moved out of Landfair 30 days before I had to, just to be nice to you and Vicky. But do I get any credit for it? No. No, you two are so prejudiced against me. You know, if I went to go nurse lepers in a leper colony, you would convince yourselves I was doing it to meet men. Why don't you try Devil's Island? You'd be right at home. What's with Tina? She ran down the hall so fast, she, uh, she didn't even see me. Forget about Tina. She's just a little more sensitive than usual. Well, she's not the only one. Look, Richard, I'm uh, sorry. I, I, I didn't mean to throw you for a loop by telling you that Becky Lee was back in town. 
Yeah, well, it had that effect just the same. Well, the way I heard it, you two had gone your separate ways. You know, she, she's got a music and her marriage, and you've got your career. Now, well, don't get me wrong, Clint. I wish Becky nothing but the best. It's just easier to wish it from a distance. Well, nevertheless, I'm, uh, I'm glad she's back. If nothing else, it'll slow down her campaign for you. Clint, I know that you mean well, but what goes on between Tina and me is really none of your business. Oh, then there is something going on. Just do us both a favor and back off, okay? I could say the same thing to you, you know. Why don't you do everyone a favor, including yourself, and let Tina find another sucker, starting tonight. It is getting very late, and if I am going to give you, Mrs. Buchanan, any competition at all tonight, I think I'd better go upstairs and change my clothes and get my hair fixed. Mrs. Buchanan, the way Asa has been looking at you recently, no matter what you're wearing, you don't have to worry about competition. Well, I'm not so sure about that, the way Asa's ex-wives keep popping up at the most unexpected times. Please, uh, don't start on Becky Lee again. Yes, you were saying that she stopped by here earlier, huh? Oh, yes, we had a most illuminating conversation. Vicky, will you tell her that when I remarried her, I wiped my slate clean? Well, Pam, I am convinced that this time he's telling the truth. He really only has eyes for you. Well, I'm doing my very best to try to believe that. Is there a prayer that you can say for parties? <laughs> I mean, my fervent hope. No fight, no family crisis, not even a damn bomb going off in the prison. <laughs> Second that. Here, here. Oh, the only sound I want to hear are the sounds of happy, satisfied couples like you and you. Well, in that case, Pamela, let's go find your most satisfying gown. Oh, yes. I think we can trust him alone for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. I'll uh, take care of any last-minute details. Right. Not that there's anything to do, really. Right. All right, a little music before the party starts. Gonna set the mood. The gentleman has never looked handsomer. Oh. Thank you very much. Um, young lady, can I have two of those? For two, for moi. What was that for? Oh, the rest of the evening. Since we both look so glamorous and we both came along, I think we should wait the proper amount of time and skip over to Elmo's to hear Becky the Abbott. Oh, I'm huh? afraid that I did not come along. I'm going to be meeting somebody well, later. Oh. Oh. Uh, but thank you very much for your very kind and flattering invitation. Well, well, the way you were staring at the door, it must be worth waiting for. <sighs> Have a nice night. You too. Oh, DDP. Hi, it's so good to see you. I'm so glad you could come. Oh, are you kidding? We wouldn't have missed this for anything. In fact, I don't even know where to start with my congratulations to you guys. <laughs> uh, let me see. Let's start with uh, you getting my affair back. Okay. Yeah, and then there's the little cowboy that's on his way. Yeah. Cowgirl, cowgirl. Cowgirl. Well, I don't care what he is, just so he's a healthy. 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 <laughs> Come on, let's go inside. Okay, great. Hey. 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 You're wondering why Callus is here. That's my bride. Oh, that's all right, Asa. I'm pleased to see him here. Thank you, Pete. Ace, I don't think your houses ever look lovely. Well, I don't know. 
So Pamela's doing. Oh, I didn't do very much, really. Oh, hey, hold it oh. right now. If you're going to brag, I'm going to brag. She whipped this place into shape practically overnight. Pamela, this is your first party here, isn't it? <laughs> and I was worried he wasn't even going to get off the ground. But the looks of it right now, it's going to be glorious. Come on in here. Get a drink. Some people might say it's already a successful night. No, I thought there wasn't supposed to be any campaigning here tonight. It's not, but don't worry about it. I can smile and shake hands with the best of them. All I'm missing is a baby to kiss. <laughs> well, you know, if you give us about six months, maybe we can accommodate you. Uh, I'm afraid I'm going to take a pass on that one. <laughs> oh, now, there's a sight I was hoping to see. Could you excuse me? Sure. Hey, you guys. Hey, Dee. Hi. How are you? You look great. Oh, thank you. Oh, I can't take credit. I owe it all to my design. Oh, no, you don't. You look beautiful in that dress. It was made for you. Oh, Delilah. Thanks. It's a little strange to see you here by yourself. Well, yeah, it's, it feels a little strange, too, yeah. No word from Bo, huh? Well, you know what they say, no news is whatever. So don't worry. Diddy Bo can take care of himself. Sure he can. If you need anything, Call me, okay? Okay. Please. Oh, Woody just got here. I, he hasn't told me who he's going to vote for yet. Excuse me. It's a little later. You know, Delilah, I have a pretty short attention span when it comes to parties. Oh, now he's talking. Yeah, well, I might as well tell you the truth. I'd rather be sitting at a table at Elmo's. Why? Because Clover works there? No, ma'am, because Becky Lee is singing there tonight. Becky? Is she really? Yeah, yeah, so what do you say we cut out of here when the party begins to wind down? We'll go over there and catch Becky's second show, huh? Oh, that's great. Yeah, I'd love to. <laughs> oh, good. There's Richard. Let's go say hello. Well, I'll be very happy to now that I see that Tina's not along. But darling, she wasn't invited. Well, I know that, and you know that. But I'll bet the farm she did everything to get him to make an exception in her case. Do you really think she has that much power over him? Well, not as much as she would like, but uh, she did get him to agree to meet her later. At Elmo's. At Elmo's? But that's... Did you tell Richard that Becky Lee is singing that Oh, I made damn sure he knew. And I know they were divorced a long time ago, but I think some wounds heal a lot faster than others, and in Richard's case, I'm not entirely sure that wound is healed even now. Why do you think I told him about Becky? Nothing would make me happier than to see him leave here early tonight. To meet Tina? No, to meet Becky. Oh. Now, Tina may decide to go along for the ride. But if she does, she's going to be in for a very bumpy experience. Okay. <laughs> Can you believe this? The four of us together, not one of us lying in a hospital. Oh, stop it. You're going to jinx this. Come on. Pamela, you have done a magnificent job with this party. You must have had a lot of practice in Malakeva. Oh, okay, no, but... not really. Pamela, no, no. Tell Larry about that luau you threw for the king and queen of the island. You talk about parties. Mimi, I want to show you something. Really? Here. Now, come on in. I'm going to get a drink. Are you serious? Did you throw a party for a king and queen? Come on, no. You know how Ace exaggerates. I mean, the largest party I've ever thrown is a big birthday bash for the children on Malakava. Well, then you're either a fast learner, Mrs. Buchanan, or you've got a natural gift. Well, so do you. for saying the right thing, doctor. Come on. Well, uh, you and Larry seem to be getting along all right. Oh, come on, just friends. <laughs> all right, we're more than just friends, but I don't think Larry's ready for anything serious. How about you? If my memory serves me right, you should be Mrs. Larry Wallach if that Laurel hadn't come on the scene, and you would have been if that Kipling... Asa, Asa, my life is too full of would have been, so let's not talk about it, okay? Come on. All right. <laughs> Mimi, hmm. what about babies? Babies? The good Lord put you on this earth for several good reasons. One is to be a mother. If I know the good Lord like I do, he ain't gonna disappoint you. <sighs> Dorian, don't worry, it's still early. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have let the invitation speak for itself. Maybe I should have phoned him and let him know how important it was for him to be here. Uh, important to you? No, not really. I mean, it's just terribly, terribly important to him. And look at this room. It is filled with the wealthiest, most powerful people in Landview. I mean, they need detectives more than anyone. Anyone, Dorian? Almost anyone. <laughs>
one life to live will continue in a moment. How about if I freshen up your glass? How about if I throw it? Oh, just keep telling yourself he's not worth it. He's not... Somehow I can't make myself say it. Uh-oh. What's he doing here? He who? Your detective friend. Over there with the gorgeous brunette. Oh, you mean Jonathan Russell, the man who saved my life in the parking lot. Yeah, uh, what's he like? How would I know her? I mean... Would you do me a favor, please, and uh, get me another drink? <laughs> my name's Ace of Buchanan. I'm your host this evening. This here's my wife, Pamela. Uh, how do you do? John Russell, and this is Caroline Wells. John, how do you do? Carolyn, I can't tell you how excited I was when John told me about your invitation. This has got to be the party of the year. Well, I hope you have a good time. Are you friends of Vicky's? Actually, I'm a friend of a friend. Russell, shoot, I remember. Come on over, you two. This is Dorian's friend, Mr. Russell, and his friend, Miss Wells. Hello. Hello. I'm Cliff Buchanan. Oh, no introductions are necessary. Caroline, this handsome couple are the guests of honor tonight. Congratulations, Mr. and Mrs. Buchanan. Well, please, Thank it's you. Vicky and Clint. And I'm Caroline Wells. Thank you. I can't believe that I'm actually meeting you. I have admired your work on the banner for years. Thank well, you. even more than that, I've admired the way you two have come through these last couple of months. Oh, that's true. I think the whole town is happy for you tonight. <laughs> well, that's a very nice thought. Thank yes, you. it's very nice. Thank you. Well, if you two will excuse me, I'll introduce Carolyn and John to a few. Faces. Okay, we'll see you later. Run along, honey. <laughs> Pamela's kind of getting the hang of this hosting the job, isn't she? Oh, you'd never think she's a rookie. <laughs> honey, something wrong? Not yet. Wait a minute. Nothing's ticking down here. Yeah. Sort of all depends on how short a fuse Dorian has. Don't you see what's going on here? Uh, Mr. Russell's a very handsome man. Oh, well, so what? You're... You're surrounded by handsome men. Oh, darling, that's not what I mean. He's the one who rescued Dorian from the mugger. Wait a minute. That's why she asked for that invitation. She's paying back her debt. Oh, Asa, really? You men can be so dense sometimes. Come on, she didn't ask for the invitation as a favor. She was obviously hoping to meet him here. And instead, he showed up with Miss Universe. And I'm the one that prayed there'd be no fireworks here tonight. Mm. Oh, Dorian, there you are. No, I, was I don't have to introduce you. You already know John. Can you excuse me one moment? Yes. Oh, hello, Dorian. Mm -hmm. You look absolutely lovely tonight. Thank you, John. That's very kind of you. Mm -hmm. Darling, shouldn't we do something before Dorian does? Well, maybe uh, now we'll find out just how short her fuse really is. Jonathan, aren't you forgetting something? Oh, I'm sorry. Caroline Wells, <laughs> Dorian Lord, Connie O'Neill. Mrs. Lord, I have seen your television program many, many, many times. How lovely. It's so nice to meet a fan. Excuse me. Good old Dorian. She really can be a class act when she wants to be. Mm. Did I miss something? <laughs> uh, fortunately, I think we all did. <clears throat> yeah. There's that guy again. Who? The one that's with Cassie. I've never seen him before in my life. I have. He says his name is Craig Stone. But I, I'm sure I've seen him somewhere else. I just can't remember where. Why is it something change of heart? It's a woman's prerogative, isn't it? Anyway, when I saw you sitting here all alone, looking so very, very handsome, I thought I would take you up on your kind invitation to go to Alpha's Oh, well, I'm flattered. I'm also curious. Did your date stand you up? Oh, you nonsense. <laughs> Hi. Oh, no. This is the hunk that you were talking about? <laughs> yes, of course it is. <laughs> I'm keeping close watch on David's family and friends. Keep a closer watch on Vicki Buchanan in particular. I thought it was Cassie who worried you most. That was before the escape. Jenny won't risk David's life by calling the police, but she may try to contact her closest friend in Manville. You 
don't really expect me to say these words. I don't only expect you to say those words, but I expect you to say them with utmost sincerity, don't I, Dita? If you think I'm going to stand up in front of some international press conference and read this garbage, you're a bigger fool than I thought you were. Well, we won't be unreasonable. Perhaps you'd like to make a few changes. Oh, yes, maybe only the beginning, the middle, the end. This isn't a speech. It's some long-winded diatribe against my own country. Oh, your own country? Which is that? Oh, America the Beautiful that is trying to put you into jail? Now, look, my problems with my country are my business, but I don't intend to turn my back on it just to provide you with some propaganda. Uh, perhaps you'll do it for the sake of Jenny's life. If she's still alive. I heard the way you mentioned her name on the phone a little while ago. Oh, that was merely confirming that she's being well treated in a new home. Fine. I'll believe that when I talk with her. Perhaps there's something else you believe. Dieter there wouldn't hesitate to crack your skull like a hazelnut. Is that supposed to frighten me? No. But it may cause you to consider your options a little bit more carefully. For Jenny's sake, as well as your own, you depend on your cooperation with us. It's your choice. Your life with Jenny in a new land, or no life at all. You make a very convincing case. I suppose you convince me that my wife is still alive. Operator, isn't there anyone there that speaks English? English! Please, please, I'm trying to make a call to the United States. I need your help, please. Yes. Yes, operator, please. Please, I need you to help me make a long-distance call to the United States. Yes, person to person to Victoria Buchanan. Buchanan, Landview, Pennsylvania. Yes. No, I, I want you to reverse the charges. Collect, make it collect. Circuits are busy. Could you please try again? This is very important. This is an emergency. Yes. 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 I'll, I'll try back later. Look at me. We are going to be together again. This is not the last time that I will touch you and look at you. We will make love again a thousand times. We are going to have a life together. I swear it to you. I want to believe you. You got to, or we got nothing. Please, don't give up. Don't give up. Oh, God. I love you so much. Fräulein, stimmt etwas nicht? Ist alles in Ordnung, Fräulein? Sagen Sie mir bitte, was ist das Problem denn? No, don't touch me. Oh, you speak English. May I be of help to you? No, I don't need any help. Look, you have my word that Jenny is quite safe and waiting for you to join her. Fine. Let her tell me that herself. I'll even pay for the call. Oh, must I repeat? While you're in the West, you cannot ring Jenny because the calls are being monitored by American agents. Well, there's one sure way to find out. Would you tell your goon here that I'm just trying to check for a bug? Dieter is hardly a goon. And he's smart enough to know that Americans have a more sophisticated means of tapping a telephone than a simple bug. You've got an answer for everything, don't you? Well, how about an answer for this? Your big press conference is going to be an even bigger bust if I don't play along. But you will play along in your quaint little way. 
You will memorize your speech, deliver it with passion, for Jenny's sake as well as your own. And Dita here will encourage you every step of the way. I believe this is our dance. Well, my darling, I would love to. The strangest thing just happened. Uh, the music, the ambiance, reminded me of where we must have met before. At the Cannes Film Festival. I thought that you were in the antique business. I am. Uh, but I was at the festival at the time, and I was acquiring some uh, antique pottery. You must have been covering the festival. Uh, yes, for my Paris paper. That's well, there it is. The mystery has ended. We must have run into each other at the casino, or uh, at a, a screening, or... Uh, Mr. Stone! I have covered a lot of film festivals all over Europe, and I don't remember meeting you at any of them. Well, still, it's possible that we've met. I don't think so. But don't worry. I'll remember eventually. Ah, thank you very much, Fred. <laughs> thank you, Wilma. <laughs> Wilma! Ginger, Ginger. I'll have you. Oh, wait, wait, Ginger and Fred. Uh, you dance beautifully. <laughs> Thank you think you two were in love or something? You'd think. <laughs> well, I'm glad oh. I got a chance to see you dance before I go. Richard, you're not leaving, are you? The party's just getting warmed up, Abbott. You're going to dance later yourself. <laughs> Thank you, Pamela, for a lovely evening. And I'm sorry I have to leave so soon, but I promise I'd eat some. Oh, Tina? I don't expect you to sympathize, but she's feeling kind of alone today. Oh. I think it's very kind of you to do that. Don't you, Asa? Yes, kind, but dumb. <laughs> Anyway, I have to meet her over at Elmo's, so I better be going. Thanks for a lovely evening. Good night. You imagine, Good night. you imagine that kid leaving a great party so he won't be late for that Tina? Mm. Are you so sure that it's Tina he wants to hurry up and see? Mm. Come on. And I happen to know that she is just as excited to be here tonight. Now, uh, the lady told me herself, yes, it's true, she does talk to me that for the first time in a long time, she has, believe it or not, butterflies. Now, we are going to make her feel right at home, are we not? Hello. Yeah. Uh, not Becky Lee. They still love you and land you. All right. Now, I, I'd like the question to is, note, does Richard still love you, Becky? Or maybe not. <laughs> but uh, it all started for me a couple of years ago when I was down in Nashville for the first Becky time. Becky Lee, hey, I know my time is terrible, but one of your fans practically me begged me for your autograph. I'm just about to go. Oh, oh I know. But look, you just got to scribble it real quick. Silver, oh, please, come on. That I have for her because the lady is terrific. The Memphis Songbird, the princess of country music, <laughs> Miss Becky Lee Evan. Hello. Party. One what? One party, poo, poo Come on, Webb. What's the matter with you? You look fantastic. You should be having fun. I would be if I were really here. Well, where are you? Brad left for Vienna today, and I wish I could have gone with him, but he wouldn't let me. I'm glad he didn't, because uh, one trip to Austria was quite enough. Not as long as David and Jenny are still missing, and as soon as I get my hands on a phony passport, I'm going, whether he likes it or not. Phony passport? Are you out of your mind? No. I can't use my own. I mean, if enemy agents find out who I am, they, they would grab me. As yeah, soon as they... they might grab you, no matter what they may use it. And in case you haven't heard, uh, forging a passport is a felony. You could be looking at five years in the pen. I'm not scared. This brings my date, Mr. Woodward. Should I be jealous? Hi, I'm... Oh, 
I thought we said this party was off limits. It was, till you started shaking hands. <laughs> well, I can't help it if I got a lot of friends here, you know. Hey, that's my problem, too. You know that her? Really? You what? two uh, trading secrets or punches? Well, Judge Parker, hello. How you doing? No, 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 no. I was just saying it's a shame we can't relax for a night and forget the campaign. Mm. Yeah, somebody's always trying to get the extra edge. Huh? <laughs> well, you don't have to win me over either one of you. Particularly impressed how you've been running the DA's office here. Oh, I thought you want to say that a little louder, Judge. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, Pete, but uh, you're one of, the, one of the finest trial lawyers we've got. But, uh, if it ain't fixed, don't break it. That's why Herb here gets my boat. <laughs> no offense taken, Your Honor. Excuse me, um, my uncle might take no for an answer, but I don't. Judge Parker, my niece and campaign manager, Dee Dee Buchanan. Dee Dee? Nice to meet you. Nice Perhaps to meet you. if we had one little dance, I could change your mind on that vote. Well, if this is what you mean by twisting arms, I'm all for it. Dorian, <laughs> <laughs> don't be so down on yourself. I can't help it. I feel somehow as if it's my fault. I should... Dorian, there you are. You know, we've been looking for you everywhere. Oh, have you, John? Yeah, well, I wanted to thank you for the invitation tonight. We both wanted to thank you, Mrs. Lord. John and I have met so many fascinating people at this party. Yes, so have I. I, I tell you what, why don't you all wait right here, and I'm going to go get us some champagne. No, don't bother. Not for me, anyway. Uh, this party is not as exciting as I hoped it would be, so I'm going to be sneaking out and going to Elmo's with a friend of mine. But don't let me spoil it for you all. Have a great time. Good night, John. Mr. Richard Abbott might have to wait. Do you look at the way he's looking at Becky? He just appreciates talent. Oh, is that what it is? about that one. <laughs> oh, it's great to be here. Hmm. Listen, I've been told that this is uh, the request part of the show right off the top here, so I'm just going to go right ahead and ask if there's any tune that any of you would like to hear. If there is, go ahead and talk. Well, yes. Yes, 
Operator, I'm trying to make a long distance person to person call to the United States. Are the circuits clear yet? Yes, operator. I'd like to make a person to person call to Mrs. Victoria Buchanan. Oh, darling, everybody, it's lovely out on the terrace. We should go out there and dance. Oh, Excuse me, Vicky. Vicky, well, here's a phone call for you. Long distance. Long distance? Who is it? I don't know. John Cloud took it, but there's a phone right out in the hall. Thank you. Excuse me. Hello? Yes, this is Vicky Buchanan. Vicky? It's me. It's Jenny. Jenny! Good reason. somebody else. Personally, I find it very exciting to see a man face his ex-wife after all these years, don't you? Hey, Becky! Uh -huh. How about I'd rather leave while I'm in love? Oh, yeah, well, I haven't done that one in a long time, but uh, I think maybe uh, we remember it, fellas. We'll give it a go. Well, I'll be. You know, during rehearsal, somebody asked for that same song and she swore she would never sing it. Why not? Well, it reminded her of somebody she used to be in love with. It was their song. How do you expect me to memorize this garbage? It's just a guideline. You're right, man, David. Put it in your own words. Yeah, sure. I never knew a moment of real peace in the United States. Um, in my new home, I will live in peace in a country where all men are treated equally. Sounds like a pre-recorded message. In fact, why don't you read this? I'll just lip sync. Oh. <laughs> I really enjoy your sense of humor sometimes, David. You think a trained reporter isn't going to know a puppet act when he sees one? I'm sure you can be very convincing, if you want to. Yeah, believe me, folks, I'm going to a glorious life of leisure behind the sunny iron curtain. <laughs> Tell you what, you're not going to get so much as a good evening out of me until I know that Jenny is safe. Oh, really, David? You have so little trust. She's fine. Prove it. Your music will live long after all of us are gone. Don't change the subject, comrade. <sighs> Would it help you to know that when you conduct your interview, your loving wife will be standing right by your side? Jenny, she's here? Vicki? Come on, folks, the fire's in the room. Darling, uh, we've been so worried about you. Are you all right? No. No, I'm not all right. Where are you? I'm in Vienna, Vicky. I really need your help. I didn't know what else to do. Are, are you with David now? You, you know what happened to David? talk to you right now. Just please. I, I need to see you. We'll be there, darling. We'll be there. Clint, me and the U.S. Cavalry, if necessary. Oh. Just, just get a room at the soccer hotel. I'll contact you. All right, please. I really need you. I love you. Is there any place that I can get in touch with you? 
No, just please hurry. Will you please? Please just... Jenny in trouble? Yes. Excuse me, Miss Cannon. Can I use the phone? Oh, sure. Thank you. I tell you, I gotta cancel this little shindig pronto. She needs our help. We're gonna have to move fast. Uh, folks, uh, I want to have your attention, please. We had a slight crisis in my family. No need for anybody to worry, but uh, I'm going to have to end the party. And uh, but I'll make it up to you all. And uh, I'm sorry, but thank you so much for coming. Did everybody hear me shout out her name? I'm afraid so, sweet. Oh, so stupid of me. I think it was, I was just so shocked. Where is she? <clears throat> Jenny, okay? I uh, I can't say anything right now, Rafe. Is there some sort of problem with Brad? I know you're concerned, but it's personal and. Uh, She'd like uh, Clinton Vicky to handle it. Hey, don't worry. Jenny's going to be all right. Is there anything I can do to help? No, but thanks. It's, it's in good hands. Excuse me. Uh, was that really Jenny? Yeah, yeah. Play it down, though. Ace doesn't want anyone else involved. Well, Vicky looks worried. Something could be wrong. Yeah, well, whatever it is, it's between Jenny and the Buchanans. Well, maybe I should go talk to Vicky. No, look. The best thing, we'll find out eventually what it is. The best thing we can do right now to respect Ace's request, we'll go over to Elmo's and we'll watch Becky Lee's act, okay? I don't know what happened. She just suddenly had to hang up the telephone. All I know is that she's in some sort of terrible trouble. We have to help her. We'll make our plans as soon as Ace has got the place cleared out. Vicky, what? What did Jenny say about David? Cassie. Easy. The place is still full of guests. Just tell me, is he still alive? As far as I can tell, yes. Well, where did she call from? Vienna, honey. She was very, very, very upset, as if she was in some sort of terrible trouble. She couldn't talk, but the only thing that was clear is that she desperately needs help. You'll see your wife when the time comes. I want to see her now. Well, she's much too far away. That doesn't make any sense. It will to the press. You see, David, when your lovely wife appears by your side, it won't really be your wife. Just a fairly reasonable facsimile. You. Yes. I've been studying her for quite some time now. I've got her makeup, her dress, her hair. You don't sisters. really think that you're going to get away with that. My dear David, when will you grow up? Darling, look at you. You're gorgeous. You really must look your best for the press. You don't sound a thing like her. I disagree, but then it doesn't matter. I'm going to be strictly in the background, gazing at you with moonstruck eyes. You gaze all you want, lady. But if you expect a performance out of me, forget it. You're not getting it. Have you talked some sense into our reluctant defector? You talk to him. I've about reached the end of my patience. This is the moment that we have been building for. You will smile for the photographer. You will follow your prepared text and you will stand proudly in front of your surrogate wife and do whatever is required of you. Do I also salivate when the bell rings? I'm not Pavlov's dog, I'm a man in love with his wife, his real wife. And until I know that she's safe, you can carry on this whole idiotic charade without me. <laughs> and the only way that you will ever see your precious Jenny again is if you do exactly Told. Oh, if you want to destroy this little, this little press conference, fine, go ahead. The price is Jenny's life. I'm warning you, Dirk. Oh, haven't you got that a little bit backwards? It is I who is warning you. It was I who admitted this reporter, regardless. And I think you better make a quick decision. Does Jenny live or die? Oh, don't be silly, Dirk. David wouldn't do anything to jeopardize my life. Hello, darling. I think you can show in the reporters. We're quite ready for them now. I'd rather leave while I'm in love while I still believe the meaning of the word I'll take my dreams and just pretend that you and I were never meant to end too many times I've seen the rose die on the vine when 
somebody's heart gets broken usually it's mine i don't want to take the chance of being hurt again and you and i can't say goodbye so if you wake and find me girl hey babe just carry on you see, I need my fantasy. I still believe it's best to leave while I'm in love. Too many times I've seen the rose die on the vine. When somebody's heart gets broken, usually it's mine. I don't want to take the chance. Well, I'll tell you later. Well, it must have been fun with everybody there. Shh. I need my fantasy. I still believe it's best to leave. from Landview. God. Um, listen, we're just going to take a little break now. Uh, but sit tight. We'll be back in a little while and we'll do a second set. Thank you. I heard that you were in town. I'm so glad that you could come here, Richard. Well, you look great. Oh, you look terrific yourself. Hi, Tina. How are you? Hello. Uh, uh, so, would you like to join us? I'd love to. Yeah. Thank you. You know, it really knocked me out hearing you sing that song again. Oh, I know. It feels like yesterday, doesn't it? You know, while I was watching you, I could remember you talking about wanting to hit the big time and, and me trying to talk you out of it. I, I just want you to know if there's any crow left on the menu, it's I... It's just ancient history. Then, but listen, you haven't exactly been sitting still yourself. I heard all about the splash you made in Paris, becoming a top-notch journalist. It's wonderful. It sounds like everything that you want. Well, almost. Well, Becky, how's your husband? Oh, Jesse, he's just fine. So's Drew. Hey, Tina, I've been keeping up with some of your goings-on. Been reading The National Intruder. Oh, Becky Lee, you don't really believe all that stuff, do you? Uh -huh. Well, nobody does. Uh, Look, I'd love to hear about your music and, and Memphis and what you've oh, been doing. Oh, that would take all day and all night. It is really terrific to see you. I, I gotta tell you the truth. When I heard that you were in town, I was, I was a little nervous. Well, why? Well, I guess I just wasn't sure how you'd react. But when I saw you from the stage, I knew it'd be okay. Thought maybe we'd even managed to be friends at the game. Well, isn't that funny, Becky Lee? Because Richard and I are really getting to be close friends. Yeah, he even stayed with me when I was at Lanford. Of course, I don't have Lanford anymore, but Richard and I just keep getting closer and closer. Did you hear the reaction of that crowd? I mean, look at how many people are in here. I mean, any bigger, we could have we could have got Landview Arena. I uh, know. Did you tell you at the gate? The biggest hall that we ever had. And we're even going to have enough money for the hospital after I pay Miss Becky Lee Abbott. Speaking of which, I got her John Hancock on the receipt. So as soon as you fork over the $10,000, it's yours. This is the screwiest way I've ever heard of paying an artist. Why? Wow, you always go through an agent, don't you? Yeah, I go through an agent. I give them a check. I don't give cash to Clover Wilde. Well, it was part of our agreement. It's still weird, Clover. I, I think I'm going to ask her about it. No, don't you dare. 
Listen, I told you, Becky Lee does not like discussing money now. She always has an on-the-scene representative at every single gig. And it is my job to make sure you don't go bothering her about it, okay? So you give me the cash, let me deal with the details. Otherwise, she might not play Elmo's again. Okay, 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 okay. You just stay put. I'll go get the cash. Honey, all I know is this. She's in Vienna. She needs help. And she asked us to come right away. What about David? I don't know, honey. She couldn't talk very much. She sounded terrified as if someone were breathing down her neck. One but... thing we can be sure of is that she's still alive. If he wasn't with her, then where is he? I don't know, but I, I think that if something had happened to him, she, she would have told Maybe him. Maybe she doesn't know what's happened to him. Maybe he's being held some captive somewhere. Maybe he's dead. But Cassie, we have no idea yet what happened. Clint is right, sweetheart. Don't panic. We know that they're in danger, right? And we're going to help. How? Do you know how big Vienna is? I mean, you don't even know where she's staying. Sweetheart, she asked us to go to the Sacher Hotel. She said that she would find a way to meet us there. Thank you so much for coming, and thanks for understanding. Thank you, Asa. Thank you. Good Good night. Take care. Good night. Nobody wants to leave. They're worried. Yeah. Maybe they're just nosy. No, a lot of those people knew Jenny and Brad. I mean, when they suddenly got married, it raised a lot of eyebrows. So naturally, they're curious. Do me a favor, honey. You run along, too. Asa, I can't leave. I want to I wanna help. Connie, the best thing for you is to go home. Leave it to me, Clint and Vicky. I'm involved. Look, I know that David left Lambview alive. Where did you hear such a thing? I knew everything. I was secretly seeing Brad when he came back to Landview. I also know that he's heading for Vienna right now. And if he's heading for a war zone, I really have to know about this. And I can't leave until I find this out. You know, Mr. Rinaldi, as an American, it's pretty hard for me to swallow what you're saying. Precisely why the maestro has wanted to see an American as for the first interview. He wanted someone who was tough, probing and skeptical and would also... If you don't mind, sir, yeah. I was directing my comment to Mr. Rinaldi. What he says is true. I know that people in the United States will have a difficult time accepting my decision, but it's really very simple. I found a better way of life. Why didn't you defect months ago instead of hiding out with your wife in Austria? I wasn't sure what kind of reception I'd get in my new country. Once we made contact, they made it clear to me in no uncertain terms. I but... think what my husband means is that it was a very difficult time for us, wasn't it, darling? We felt like neither side wanted us. We were people without a country until Dirk came along, and thanks to his kindness and understanding, well, we look forward to a bright, wonderful new future together. In a totalitarian regime? Mr. Rinaldi? I've given you my statement. It was my understanding you'd answer questions. The uh, type of regime is relative. Uh, what really counts is the society and the people. And, uh... That's pretty vague. Well, I didn't have much freedom in the United States. I mean, the NSB was always hounding me. I never knew a moment's peace. And at least now, somehow, Jenny and I stand a chance. Somehow? We look forward to our life together. That's really all I have to say. What about your family back home? Your daughter, Cassie. Don't you ever want to see her again? As you can see, this is not easy for us. Neither of us was prepared to answer personal questions right now. I just wanted to ask Mr. Rinaldi... What, what I wanted to remind you of was that you being the only reporter here is a privilege that we granted you. I appreciate that. But isn't this just the prelude to a much larger media event? Paul well, the Maestro is giving a final concert, the uh, farewell to the West. And, of course, any additional question you want to ask, you can ask that. I just want a simple statement. I want to know how it feels to gain a worldwide reputation as an American artist, and then turn your back not only on your country, but your family, your friends, Please, everyone... Please, haven't we answered enough of your questions? My husband is tired. We've both been under a great deal of strain. 
He needs time to rest and to prepare for his concert. He has no, nothing further to say at this time. No. Can you include that in your article? Mm -hmm. But really, Master, I want to... Mr. Rinaldi is world news right now. Everything he says is important. Go ahead, sir. I want to let my daughter Cassie know that I love her very much and that I always will and that I ask her to remember me and think about not where I'm going but the places that we've been together and specifically I want her to remember that wonderful summer that we spent together at Lake Landview. No more questions. I just have one item I'd like to clarify if I may. Please, that's enough. You have your story. Please. Okay. Thank you all very much. By tomorrow morning, the whole world will know the truth about what happened with our American conductor. But the big question still remains. Why? I'll send in the photographer when you folks are ready. Good luck. We'll wait for you. I'll send you the messages when you're ready. You damn fool. You came perilously close to destroying everything. Something wrong with telling my daughter I love her? You and your stupid sentimentality. Look, I don't expect Cassie to understand my defection, but I can't bear the thought of her hating me for the rest of my life. Such considerations won't trouble you much longer. In a short time, we're leaving her for good, but I warn you. You'd better handle yourself more capably at the farewell concert. Or it won't be just the West that we're saying goodbye. It'll be your wife as well. All right, Dirk. I think David understands his position. Shall we get ready for the photographers? What's that for? His photographs will be shown throughout the West, including Land View. The last scene of your wife's face, the better. Shall we cozy up? Forget it. I'm through being your automaton. Far from it, my friend. I'm admitting the photographer now. And we might see our hero stays on the line. Don't worry, Dirk. He will. If he knows what's good for him. He told me everything, Asa. The phony wedding, his life as Bud Van Dyke, all of it. What in the hell's the matter with that boy? He had no choice. I recognized him. Who else did he tell? No one. I've been helping him keep his cover a secret. We were engaged at one time, remember? Wait a minute. Married man, I hear you're seeing... That one... was Brad. So you see, I've been involved in this from the very start. So please tell me about that phone call. I don't know anything about it except his trouble. You want to be some use around here? Help me send these folks home. And we'll talk later. Where the hell have you been? Well, I, I took a wild shot and I called Vienna. Called the airport, thought maybe I'd catch up with Brad, but his plane doesn't come in for a couple hours. Have you seen Pamela around? Uh, yeah, she took the Carlton's home so they wouldn't have to hang around here and wait for a cab. Good thinking. You know, these people don't shove them off. I'm serious, Woody. I just may take my whip and just tickle them with it. Cassie, okay, so you seem so upset. Can I take you home? No, no, I'm, I'm going to stay a little bit longer. I'm, I'm fine, really. Thank you. That call was from Jenny Vernon, wasn't it? Um, I can't really talk about it right now. You've been so concerned about Jenny and her husband, Brad. Are they all right? Is it's, there any trouble? It's family business, really. I'm sorry. But you're not related to the Vernons, are you? Well, they're like family. Look, Craig, I, I have to stay here and talk to the Buchanan's for a while, so do you mind going home alone? Would you rather I waited outside? We could go for coffee oh, no, after... that's fine, really. Excuse me, uh, Craig. Asa asked me to help with the good nights. Oh, well, pardon me for lingering. I was just worried about Cassie. I'll get her home safely. Well, all right, then. Yeah. I've got some work to do tonight anyway, so uh, I'll call you soon. Okay, thanks. Thanks for being so concerned. <laughs> Good night, Cassie. Where have you been? Uh, calling the airlines. I booked myself on the first available flight to Vienna. When does it leave? Tomorrow afternoon. Oh, good. I'm going with you. No, you're not. Yes, I am. She's my closest friend. After everything she's done for me, you can't expect me to stand around here and do nothing for her. I'll call you as soon as I've made contact. No, she specifically asked for my help. It's too damn dangerous. That doesn't matter. Look, I love you and I love Jenny, and there's no way I'm going to let you handle it without me anyway. I'm sorry, sweetheart, but you are staying home. Uh, about... 
Guten Abend, gnädige Frau. Abend essen? Nein, I'm in Café, danke. Ah, you are American. Yes, I'm, I'm here vacationing. Oh, a wonderful choice. Vienna in the spring. This table will be uh, all right for you? Um, could I sit here? I can see out the window better. Oh, sehr gut. Okay. Excuse me, is that the only entrance to the soccer hotel over there? Uh, aside from the service entrance. You are waiting for someone to arrive? Uh, no, just just curious. It's a lovely building. Yeah, all of the uh, wealthy Americans stay there. Perhaps you would care for some uh, strudel with the cafe, yeah? No, no, nothing. So good. I'm going to shortchange Becky Lee Abbott. I know, but it's part of my job to count. You'll be glad to know it's all here. And here's your receipt. It's been a pleasure doing business with you, Theo. Mm -hmm. You know, Clover, you have to think about opening up your own agency because you drive a hard bargain, lady. Well, I'm just looking out for the interest of my client. Yeah. You sure she always does business this way? Hey, I know it's a little unorthodox, okay? But she is a big star, and yeah. you don't ask questions. Okay, I know, I know. And it does keep it off the books. You got what you want. So do you. 10% of that is $1,000 for you, lady. I earned every red cent. Speaking of which, here comes the man I want to celebrate with. Looks like you've got company, Chloe. Yeah, well, I think I'll just have to get his attention with a nice bottle of champagne. Now you, don't you go embarrassing Becky. I'm not going to spoil a beautiful evening like this. Wait a minute. Do you remember that time when we were in New York in that fancy restaurant and that rich-looking lady dropped her purse at all of the restaurant's the, flatware? The flatware came out. <laughs> oh, and do you remember when we rented those horses and that ride that we took early that oh, morning in Central Park? That was so beautiful. Uh, yeah, speaking of memories, Becky, I think there's some right over there. Oh, my goodness, Rafe and Delilah. Oh, God, I know you just love to go and talk to them. Well, why don't we call them over? Oh, oh yeah. Well, uh, actually, Richard, I've got this terrible headache. And, uh, oh, I was going to ask you if you might take me home. Sure. Well, I just thought that you were having a good time. Oh, I am. I, I'm, I'm having a, a wonderful time. I am, and I'm very happy to see Becky, but you understand, don't you, Becky? Oh, sure. I, I uh, hope you feel better tonight. Oh, I'm sure I will, as soon as I'm away from the, from the noise and commotion. <laughs> well, it really has been wonderful seeing you, Richard. It's funny how well we got along just now. Quite a change. <laughs> Yeah, I think they call it something like older and wiser. I hope we can do it again before we before our eyes are gone. Me too. Good night. Well, Becky, I really wish we could stay for the second set. But, uh, oh, yes, I understand. Good night. Bye bye. Good night. No, Jenny's been almost like a sister to me. And we're not abandoning her. Honey, whatever the problem is, I'm better off handling it alone. And what if you get in trouble, then what? I'll be fine. Now, my mind is made up. So is mine. You know, you're right. I have been through a lot, and so have you. And the only reason that we have survived it all is because we stuck it out together. This is different. No, it is not. We are a team, and that's the way it's always going to be. And besides, I love you much too much to let you go and do this alone. If anything happened to you, I would never forgive myself. Nothing is going to forget happen it, to me. Forget it, Clint. Forget it. If you don't book me on the flight with you, I will simply be on the next plane all by myself. Damn it, Vicky. You'd do that, too, wouldn't you? You're right, I would. When, when, one way or another, I'm going to be at that hotel, and you can, you can shout and stamp your feet all you want. My mind is made up. Cassie just told me about the Saka Hotel. That is the same place that Brad's staying. I wonder if we can risk leaving a message. You two keep your feet planted in land view. Let Brad hold, handle the whole damn thing. No way, Asa. Jenny is counting on us. Brad is a smart boy. He can figure out what to do. Pa, Jenny is expecting us, not Brad. Besides, if we did leave a message, an enemy agent could pick it up just like that. 
Damn, I mean, haven't you two seen enough trouble? Asa, please, don't argue with us, all right? Glenda and I have just been over all of this. Believe me, this is the only way. What? What is it? I need you to do a very big favor for me. You have to say yes. You're absolutely certain that the call came from Jenny? Yes, she was calling from Vienna. How did the others react? Well, the guests were confused, but Jenny's closest friends were in a panic. Well, they can't have found out much. Well, apparently, all they know is that Jenny needs help. They're holding a meeting right now to decide their next step. Find out what you can, will you? They're too tight-lipped now, Dirk. It's time for more definitive action. What do you suggest? Forget the elaborate plans. Get Rinaldi across the border at once. But that defeats everything. His farewell concert is critical for our propaganda. Then move the date forward. We must complete our plans before the Americans catch on to us. <sighs> Gladly, if we could be certain of David's complete cooperation. Well, he'd be less difficult to deal with if he knew we had his precious daughter. How can you manage that? It wouldn't be difficult. The others would think she'd gone to Vienna by herself. We'd let David know that we have her and that her life is even less valuable to us than Jenny's. An interesting thought. But hold off for the moment, will you? Don't make a move until I say so. Meanwhile, stay as close as you can. That shouldn't be too hard. I have Cassie's complete confidence. <laughs> I realize it's difficult to find out what they're up to, but do what you can. All right. What if these friends of hers contact Interpol? Extremely doubtful. They're just playing a guessing game. But they know she needs help. But they also know that she could have gone to the authorities herself and that she was too frightened. And that's a good thing. As for that telephone call, how stupid can how she so? be? How so? Well, now we know she's in Vienna. It's only a matter of time before we pick her up. I don't really care what happens to Jenny Rinaldi. As long as David doesn't get wind that she's not in our custody. That's right. In essence, Jenny Rinaldi is completely completely expendable. Good Abend. Good Abend. You uh, wish your check? I, I think I'll have a little more coffee. Ah, too much. This is no good for your system, Victor. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. I was wondering, Maybe you could um, recommend an inexpensive hotel nearby. Uh, you are not staying at the soccer? No. No, I'm kind of on a tight budget. Um, I was looking for something around $20. Yeah, well, I could recommend the France list. It's uh, just around the corner. But uh, you are traveling without luggage. Oh, I left it at the um, airport. I'm going to get it when I get settled. Uh, forgive me, but uh, are you sure everything is all right? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I, uh, oh, I did a lot of sightseeing today. It is uh, none of my business, but... I really am fine, thank you. I, I think I should take my check. No. You've, been a, you've been a big help, and uh, it, the Franz list? Yeah, you cannot miss seeing it. The rooms are quite pleasant. Yeah. Well, thank you again. You've been very nice. If you decide you need help, good night. I want you to fly me to Vienna. I don't need Ace's jet. I, I don't care. I'll charter my own plane. I don't care what it costs. Uh, I'm not worried about the money. It's your little head. I, I'm worried about what's in it. Well, I'm worried about my father. Do you understand that? Look, I'm sorry. I just think it's a bad idea. I That's can't all. go by myself. And the Buchanans will not take me. They think I'm a liability. You know what? They're right. I mean, look, they stand a chance because they look like any other American couple. But the enemy agents know who you are. They probably have a whole profile on you. I'll take my chances, you. all right? What, and mess everything up? There is no way I am taking you to Austria. Fine. Then I'll just find another way to go. Hey, Cassie. Yeah. I know you want to help your father. But if you set one foot in Austria, you become a potential kidnap victim. Well, where, where will your father be then? What's this? It ain't club soda. This here is the finest champagne that we have in this establishment. And it's on me. The occasion. Uh, well, who needs an occasion? Becky Lee's back in town. I'm feeling great. Just wanted to celebrate with some of my friends. Thank you. Uh, who 
should we drink to? Well, how about the provider of the bubbly? Aw, oh, you don't want to toast me. Okay. Um, how about Becky Lee? I've got the best idea of all. Why don't we toast to Sammy? Uh, to Sammy? Yeah, to Sammy. All right. Excuse me. Excuse me. Y'all don't mind, do y'all? just love to pull up a chair. Of course not. Thanks. You know, I've been thinking about Sammy so much. I was meaning to ask you. Does she have one of those real big stuffed animals? Well, that'd take up half her room. Oh, but see, you know what? I saw just the cutest one at Logan's. It's this big old honey bear, and oh, I just want to buy it for her so much. Clover, those things cost a fortune. It makes no never mind. Come on, she's only a baby once. You know how much I love her. You've only met her once or twice, Clover. Well, I always did have a thing with babies. Really? Somehow you never struck me as the maternal type. Well, kids, just bring out the best in me. Becky! Hello, oh, how are welcome you? back. Oh, well, hello. It's so good to see you. You look wonderful. Becky! Hi, Becky. You look so beautiful. Oh, Becky, so do you. Hey, why don't you pull up a chair? I oh, sure please will. Sit I'd love down. to. Sit down. How is Jesse? He's just fine. He's so sorry he couldn't come up, but he said his best. Yeah, and where's Richard? I saw him leave Ace's party early so he could be here. Yeah, yeah, he, uh, he caught the first show and a nice long talk. But then Tina got herself a headache, so he had to take her on home. Anybody please explain to me how Tina has gotten her hooks into Richard Avenue. Would you like a drink? What about your headache? It's gone. It must have just been uh, the smoke and the noise. Nothing to do with the company. Oh, no, no, I really enjoyed seeing Becky again. Hey, you can be honest with me, remember? I am. Look, I'm sorry if you felt left out, but we had some catching up to do. Well, I understand. No more talk about Becky Lee, all right? I mean, that is all in the past. She was part of your life once, but uh, not anymore. Besides, I'd much rather talk about us. Aren't you having one? Well, no, not a whole glass. I'll just have a sip out of yours. Now, what I'd really love is to know what's going on in your mind. I can't figure you, Tina. Don't you want me, Richard? That's not the point. And what is the point? Richard, we have been getting very close for some time here. And we have been very intimate in every way but one. And we've been leading to this for a long, long time. What is it? Richard, I know you have wanted me from the moment you came back to town. And we could have a wonderful life together. It's a little early for that, Tina. In fact, I think it's a little early for anything right now. What do you mean? And there's, I don't see any sense in holding back. And what makes you think that I'm looking for a commitment? Everything that's led up to now. I mean, all the honesty and the sincerity. You call this sincere? <laughs> Damn it, Tina. You told me yourself that you used to use sex as a weapon against men. Now, isn't that what you're doing right now? Oh, and what is so terrible about wanting you? But why tonight? Why the sudden come on? It's because of Becky, isn't it? No. I thought that we had reached a, a, a certain level of honesty with each other. An honesty that would grow into a relationship. I am being honest with you. Then why didn't you tell me that you felt threatened by Becky? Instead of staging this, come on. Now, I would have understood. And I would have told you the truth. I am fond of Becky. Very fond. But that's over. She's married again. And you have nothing in the world to feel jealous about. Oh, well, that's a laugh. I'm not jealous of her. Are oh, you just going to keep on lying, even now? Yes, I want you, Tina. You're an attractive, desirable woman. But I expected more. Well, what? Well, just tell 
me what I want. I will give you I mean, whatever you want. I'll give you anything. Just call me when you're ready to give me yourself. I had a talk with Dirk a little while ago, David. There's not much time left. We're really quite concerned. About what? I did everything for you but sing your national anthem. See there? It's your attitude. You were much too hostile during the interview. He got what he came for. We barely made it through. You have to be more content. You have to seem more committed to your new homeland. Next time, think of Jenny and happy you're going to be when you're with her. If I ever see her again. Oh, but you will. Don't you see? That's going to be your reward for a job well done. I'm not a trained seal, damn it! But so help me, I will act like one. Just let me talk to my wife. Guten Abend. Guten Abend. Wir suchen jemand. Uh, vielleicht können Sie uns helfen. Vielleicht? Uh, wer ist denn das? Eine Amerikanerin, die Jenny Rinaldi heißt. Sie reist vielleicht als Jenny Vernon? Dieser Name kenne ich nicht. Zeig ihm das Foto. Hübsch, nicht? Ja. Haben Sie diese Frau je gesehen? not see another reporter, no more interviews, no more lies, not another syllable out of me until I know that Jenny is safe. The arrangements are already made. Wasn't yesterday enough of a farce? Surely you can understand your public's interest in your defection. I don't give a damn about public interest. I've already humiliated myself enough for a lifetime. Humiliation? Really, David, you used to be on our side. It didn't embarrass you then. In fact, I admired you tremendously. Oh. Well, get yourself a new icon, Greta. This one is burnt out, and you can forget about this farewell concert, because I'm not giving it. Do you want to see Jenny again? Give me some proof she's alive. Why can't you do that? And why are you masquerading as Jenny? What's something very wrong is going on here, and I want some answers, or believe me, Dirk, and you have just lost your favorite puppet. Fine, break into the morning lineup with news bulletins. Just bulletins. I don't want you doing a full story until we get all the details. No, I, I'll give it full coverage during my show this afternoon. Okay. Goodbye. It's true. They've defected. I can't believe it. David gave an exclusive interview to a well-known American journalist last night. Quote, he thinks capitalism is immoral and he's looking forward to living in his new home. I'm sorry. Why? Why are they doing this? All he ever wanted was to live in peace with Jenny. Maybe it was the isolation. He wasn't able to perform his music. No, <laughs> he knew that he wouldn't be able to perform. Ever. He accepted that when he decided to run away with Jenny. Then maybe it's just his politics. I no, never did no, understand no, them. No, 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 he, he admitted that he had made the biggest mistake of his life when he turned against the United States. He begged for my forgiveness. Oh, he's being forced to say those things. Kathy, he and Jenny are things. in a lot of trouble. I know it. Yes, do you speak English? Um, yeah, I was, uh, could you tell me if Mr. and Mrs. Clint Buchanan from the uh, United States have checked in yet? I, are, are they expected? You do have a reservation for them. Yes, right. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'll check back later. No. No, 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 no message. He was willing to die for Jenny. There is no way that he would drag her behind the Iron Curtain any more than he would go himself. But you, it is done. Don't you understand? The interview's been given. The quotes are quoted. There's even a picture of Jenny standing next and to David. And why did she call Vicky last night? How do you explain that? I admit that one is a mystery. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. She was calling because she needed help. And then a short time later, she was posing happily in front of the international press. Does it make sense to you? No. Maybe it wasn't a call for help. Maybe she just wanted to justify their reasons for defending. Why was the call cut short? 
Why did she ask Vicky and Clint to come to the Hotel Sacha in, in Vienna? Uh, that's evidence. She just did, didn't want the agents to have knowledge of the conversation. Oh, Mom, you are avoiding what is right in front of you. David and Jenny were kidnapped. They, they, they are being forced to defect. That, that was their last call for sc a scream for help before it's too late. Honey, I'm sorry. You're imagining things. No, I'm not imagining anything. I, I went into an abandoned cottage in Austria. That was not my imagination. Nor was the, the fact that David left the original sheet music as a clue. On purpose, he left it there. That was not my imagination either. I admit that we don't have a lot of answers to a lot of questions, but there's nothing we can do but wait. I, I can't wait. I'm going to Austria myself. Kathy, I would have no. been there already if I didn't think that I would be getting David into some kind of trouble. Just a minute. If what you're saying is true, you could be putting yourself in danger. I don't care. I care! You just get this stupid idea right out of your head. You're not going to leave Landview if I have to hire armed guards to stand out for a I thought you door. were so convinced that they had chosen to defect on their own free will. Look, I don't know what I think. I just know that I don't want you getting yourself killed. Especially not for that traitor. He's my father. He's betrayed his country before. Well, he's paying for that now. He betrayed you and he betrayed okay, me. Okay, so he's not the perfect parent, but neither were you. No, I haven't been. I'm sorry, Mom. I'm sorry. No, baby, I'm the one who's sorry. I really am. That was just my resentment of your father talking, and I know that you've made your peace with him, and you love him very much, and I don't want to stand in the way of that. However, I don't want you to do anything stupid or dangerous. Please. Mom, I'd do the same thing for you. I know that, sweetheart. But you're the only child I have. So please, won't you let Clint and Vicky take care of this? Really, we don't have all the facts yet. It's just so hard to sit here and do nothing. I know that, but really, this is the best place to be. When you think about it, I mean, I've got my whole newsroom that can call us up and keep us informed of the latest developments, right? So in the meantime, we'll just Sit down, I'll have Emma make us some tea, and we'll think about more pleasant things. Subject closed? For now. Good. Now you sit down. Make yourself comfortable. Emma! Can we have some tea, please? My goodness, there must be so many things that we can talk about. I... Um... How come you uh, left the party early? After Asa broke it up? Oh! Herb invited me uh, to Elmo's, and we were going to hear oh, yeah. uh, Becky sing, but I just got a bit tired and decided to come on home. Well, then what happened to the, the guy you were supposed to meet at the party? He had other arrangements. You mean he didn't even show up? No, he... he... Look, it turned out uh, he just wasn't as special as I thought. Oh. Did you happen to meet the detective uh, that rescued me? Oh, John Russell. Yeah, uh, briefly. Mm. What do you think of him? He's handsome. Yeah. What do you think of the woman he was with? She seemed nice. I thought she seemed cheap. Mom, this is no use. I can't just sit here. I have to go to Vienna. Why are you pretending to be Jenny? It's really very obvious, David. It's for your own protection as well as hers. You see, this is a high-risk situation. Once we have you safely across the border... At least... Tell me where she is. Doesn't suit our purposes at this time. Believe me, you will see Jenny again. I want to see Jenny now. Oh, really, David? Do you think that if we'd allowed her to sit by your side at those interviews, you know her, she would have been so upset she wouldn't have held up? Oh, come on. You've been studying the woman for weeks. She's got more strength than ten of you. Emotional. And an emotional situation, the two of you together... What, what? You think we might just blow the works? Is that it? Well, wouldn't you? I'll tell you what, I'm going to blow the works myself, personally, unless I get some proof that my wife is alive. She's well, and she's safe. She's been very well taken care of. Lies. Lies. Why can't you at least arrange a secret meeting? Why can't you... 
arrange a phone call. You've heard her, haven't you? Maybe you've already killed her. Damn it! You answer me! Ah, madam, you have come back. Yes. Hello. Did you find the hotel I recommended to you? I did. I did. Thank you. It um, looked very comfortable. Yeah, not so luxurious as the Saka Hotel. Uh, are you uh, staying there? I uh, haven't decided yet. I, I noticed that you are uh, taking the same table that you had last night. Yeah, yeah, I um, just enjoy looking at the window at the street. Last night you were so intent upon watching the entrance of the Saka Hotel. Uh, are you waiting for someone to arrive? No, no, <clears throat> I'm just uh, passing the time. Oh, well, there are far more interesting ways to spend time in Vienna. Yeah, well, I'm going <clears> to <throat> I'm gonna do some sightseeing a little bit later. Forgive me, but if... Uh, there is someone in particular you are waiting for. No, no, there isn't. But what I'm trying to say is that uh, a great many Americans come in here. If there is some way that I can yes, be of help. Yes, well, thank you. Um, I, uh, I, I, I've got to get going. Bye-bye. Get Murphy on the AP tie line. I want a confirmation on the double. Yeah, yeah, get right to it. Abbott here. Yeah. Yeah, it's flooding all the services. David Rinaldi is alive and he's staging a defection to the Iron Curtain. Yeah, get a top writer on this. Yeah, I want a full mock-up in ten minutes. Good morning, Richard. Uh, Tina, I can't talk to you right now. I didn't Ellen tell you? Well, no, there was nobody out there, so I just came on in. Yeah, just, just hold on for a second. Where you said you wanted to see me about something? I want you to hit the morgue. I want you to dig up all the information you got on Rinaldi, his wife, his kids, the whole works. Now, if the story turns out to be true, you're going to have one hell of a day. I'll get right on it. But what Rinaldi story? You'll hear about it soon enough. Richard, we have to talk. Yeah, just wait a minute. Yeah, I'm sorry, Dave. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. just just go with it. Okay. Richard, this is about last night. Uh, what about last night? What? Uh, Ellen. Yeah, get me Briggs again. It's just that I couldn't even sleep last night. I was so upset. I really want you to, uh, to explain. Uh, look, Tina, we don't have time for explanations. We'll do it later, but okay? But this is too important uh, to be put off. Did you get the confirmation? Yeah. Okay, put them on three-way. Richard, please, I would just like you to try and understand. Yeah, we, just hold on for a second, will you? Tina, please, I can't hear. It's confirmed. Okay, Murphy, thanks a lot. Yeah, Briggs, are you still there? Yeah, get Anderson back here on the double. Yeah, and check with the satellite wire. We've got to get that picture. Look, Richard, I just really want to apologize. This is very important to me. Look, we'll have lunch, okay? No! No, it's not okay. Look, I just really want to tell you that you were right. I was jealous of Becky, okay? I mean, the way you two were looking at one another, and then when she, you asked her to join us at the table, and it was like I wasn't even there. We hadn't seen each other in years. Don't you think we had a lot to talk about? It wasn't the talking. It was the attention. Now, I told you that we had nothing to be jealous about. Uh, she's a happily married woman. Something else you wanted her to see me about? Yeah, it's a go. We got a confirmation. Now, the story's hitting the newsstands in Europe, but our copy of the interview will be coming through in minutes. Now, I want you to do a, a complete spread, okay? Got it. Oh, Richard, you were absolutely right. I got jealous. I should have admitted it. But no, I just went on my own way, and I pushed too hard, and I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I'll hold. Richard, look, it's just important to me that you know how I feel, and I'm really glad how close we've gotten and everything, and I want that to continue. So please, can't we just say that everything is just exactly how it was? Uh, Dave, yeah. Did you get the satellite stuff? You got it. Fantastic. I can't believe it. You're not even listening to me. Tina, I'm sorry, but this is the biggest news story of the year. Now, I can't talk to you Nathan right now. Nathan is dead and buried. I am alive and hurting. All I want is a little bit of your attention. Tina, take a walk. We want a meeting with Richard in private. Can't throw me out of here. Tina, we need to talk to Richard now. It's crucial. Oh, everything is always crucial to you. You act like you own the world. Uh, Tina, please wait outside. Or better than that, go back to your house. And I'll call you later, okay? Briggs doesn't think we're going to make the afternoon edition. Well, like hell we won't. Tell Briggs I'll be right there. Clint, could you stay here and handle any new crisis? I'll be right back. Sure, sure. You heard him. He'll call you later. I'm not leaving here until I'm finished. Oh, Tina, please. What? You two can wait outside just as easy. 
easily as I can. I have every much of a right to talk to Richard as you do. In fact, maybe even more. Let me remind you of something. Vicki and I are still in control of this newspaper. Yeah, and you're in control of Landfair, and you're in control of my money. What, you want to be in control of my social life, too? We're not concerned with your interest in Richard, Tina, which, by the way, I wish you would handle on your own time and not the banners. Oh, since when did you get so concerned about the banner? You haven't been here in weeks. Some things in this world are more important than whether or not you snag Richard Abbott. That is a very insensitive remark. Apparently, that is the only way to talk to you. Don't insult me. All right, stop me. it, both of you, Tina. Come on, this is not the time. <laughs> All I wanted was to talk to him about something personal. Oh, I'm sorry, but we are dealing with something that could be a matter of life and death, Tina. And the last thing we need, or Richard needs, is your personal problems. Well, that's right, because that's all I've ever been to you, isn't it? One big problem. Talk about that now? No, we certainly don't, because it doesn't do any good, because you don't listen to me anyway. You don't want some? Comes with styrofoam cup, luxurious around. <laughs> no, no, no. So how's the campaign going? Do a hell of a lot better if I cracked this Alexander case. Yeah. I'm sorry I don't have any new information for you on that. Well, I didn't figure you would. Chances are O'Neill's telling the truth. The mob did her in, he was helpless to do anything about it. Yeah, you want me to stick with it? Yeah. If O'Neill does have mob connections, I want to know about it before the election. Yeah. Oh, listen, I got something else for you here. What's that? The Macklin report, complete with what? tapes, pictures, the entire ball of wax. Oh, you didn't waste any time. No, you said you wanted to indict the guy before he blew Landview. That ought to seal it for you. That's nice work, John. Very nice work. You, you know, if I win this election, uh, when? When I win this when you win, yeah. election, I could use a public investigator on a district payroll. I'd work out in the open? Uh-huh. Pay's not bad. Still have time for your private clients. I'll tell you what, I'll have to think about that. All right. I mean, this undercover business is getting a little sticky right now with uh, me running around Nason Buchanan circles. Yeah, I have to admit I was surprised to see you at his party last night. Yeah, well, it was a last-minute uh, invitation. Anybody I know? No, no, no. Now, listen, tell me more about this public investigator's job. I'm on the job in the morning. Doc, oh, appreciate that, Art. Fair warning, though, your life is about to be put under a microscope. Are you afraid I've got some skeletons buried? If you do, you better bury them deeper. I know how you like your privacy, John, and believe me, working for the district attorney's office is a very public job. Yeah, well. Hey, I'm ready for a change of style anyway, you know? I just uh, wonder what Dorian might say about all this. I mean, after I gave her this whole rap when we met about not liking life in a fishbowl. Oh, yeah, now you're jumping in, huh? <laughs> Relax, won't be that bad. Dorian's different. She's a personality. She thrives on publicity. Yeah. Well, she knows how to attract it, doesn't she? Yeah, uh, that uh, creature you showed up with last night didn't do too badly, either. Carolyn. Yeah. Yeah, she's a knockout. She knows how to turn a few heads, doesn't yeah. she? Yeah. Anything serious? Nah, it's just a date, you know? It's just a date. It's very cool. <laughs> well, you know, it depends on the woman. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, for instance, you and Dorian. I don't think I would have given up so fast on her. Too fast, is that what you think? No, listen, it's none of my business. Anyway. Well, no, 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 it's all right. I didn't give up on her exactly. It was circumstances. Any chance those circumstances might uh, change? I mean, you two get back together again? Yeah, you never know, John, never know. We had problems, but then we had a lot of good times, too, and those are the things I choose to remember. Yeah. Well, you can tell that. I mean, the way that uh, you two seem to get along together. Yeah. One of those rarities friendly divorce. Yeah, I guess we, we have managed to stay close. I'll tell you one thing. For my money, she's the most beautiful woman at the fair. 